That's a hot take. Swinging around American flag, because that's what America's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like terminally chill. The insurance commercial has a fat ass, but like no personality. Yeah, I feel like sitting here and listening to this. <laughs> no, God damn it, uh, Isaac. New Noise is not the first fucking refused album. Oh, Rip no, Isaac a new one today. Do you know what I mean? Like. Don't touch my records, ever. One, we are live. Hi, guys. This is Skeleton Lipstick here with Young Shiro once again for Hot Takes. How is everybody doing in the chat today? Nice to see you guys all. Thanks for hanging out with us. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, Hot Takes, where we discuss opinions and concepts and ideas about music and life in general. And on Hot Takes, there are no bad opinions, just different dimensions of opinions, basically. So if you're a first time viewer, well, we have a wonderful guest tonight, uh, iClick, who just released a phenomenal new album, which uh, 1888, uh, we're going to call it the sex, the sex Hotline album. Let's just call it by that right now. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check it out. It is a beautiful uh, hypnagogic slow jam from start to finish, and I can't recommend the album enough. It's super fun, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. Young Shiro, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, man. Super excited to be here with the iClick boys. Um, yeah. <clears throat> just got back from a uh, road trip down to Phoenix where I played that heat That's wave. That's right. Event. You had a show. You just yeah. had a show. I got to see a lot, of, really a lot of Vapor homies. Uh, Sky oh, Yamaha I... is an extremely skilled performer, if y'all haven't listened to oh, her stuff. Oh, yeah. I love Sky Yamaha. Very skilled. Fantastic. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I... I um... I love that stage setup they have for it too. That you guys had with the um, the projection that was going on the actual DJ booth itself. Right. That was really fun looking. I liked that a lot. It was. Shout out Chief Belief for crafting all the visuals. Uh, DS dude did. His oh, that own was visuals. Chief Belief who did all that. Chief huh? Belief and Hayes TV so had a super cool setup. And Hayes TV and um, so like talented. glitched it out. Yeah, it was super cool. We had a great time. Um, but yeah, I'm doing great. I did break my headphones, so as I told you, I'm using baby's first cost headphones today, but I should sound the same to all of you lovely people that have joined us. Yeah. So, um, I guess we'll start with a music rec, maybe, from uh, you, Isaac. What, uh, what have you been listening to lately, bud? So, I have been pulling in a lot of great material lately. Um, I um, have... Uh, really been a fan of this artist called loft tapes for a really long time you listen to loft tapes i do i'm not familiar please educate so me. it's like three like kanji characters and then tapes and they make like breakbeat but it's like vapor infused breakbeat not break core nice. like sewer slut or crms yeah. but just like very chill um so loft tapes i bought an album called m anamnesis uh, pretty good stuff. Definitely uh, recommended to fans of anybody that likes Breakbeat or, or Vaporwave, of course. Um, I picked up a Trash Ghost album. Um, it's an EP that I guess was released on Floppy. I don't know the name mm. of it because it's all in like, like love Trash kanji, Ghost. But yeah, yeah. The shout out we to the homies of uh, Trash, Trash Ghost. Ghost. Uh, so definitely recommend. Outstanding. Uh, if if my computer was a better computer, I would I would link it in the chat. But um, definitely recommend Trash Ghost. You guys check out Tyler's stuff. Other than that, um, kind of uh, don't know if you've. Uh, I, I would say this artist is kind of vapor adjacent. They're affiliated with uh, Zoom Lens. Uh, they go by Xyloid. Do you ever listen to Xyloid? Um, mm, no, I haven't listened to Xyloid, kind but I do love Zoom Lens. If you like, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're, a, I think you're a Meishi Smile fan, LLLL, all I'm good a, stuff. I'm, I'm a big fan and good friend to Meishi uh, yeah. Smile. Good, good, good guy. Very, 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 very much, skilled. absolutely. And, um, and one yes. of the artists on his label, Siloid, um, has been me, involved. Me, me, Meishi is the homie. Zoom Lens is the homie label. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, another one of the older, older first wave of the internet record labels that came out back in the day in the early 2010s 
So uh, thankfully, they're still going. To Nishi smile. Respect. To, yeah, they really did. Like they've been, they've reinvigorated themselves. They put out like the Blinda Butchers album too. They recently, did. Like, they uh, did. They're all over the place. Ago, actually, I don't know uh, if I respect to Macy Smile. Respect to Zoom Lens. Love I told you I got to. Uh, least, like, I got to now. see uh, Macy Smile live at an SPF sure. 420 showcase in 2015, and um, uh, they had like this thing that they used to like put the mic right in their mouth during Belong, that one like breakcore song where they're like screaming mm -hmm. the whole time and it was just an amazing experience. Uh, I saw the homie Meishi probably back in uh, 2020 or 2019 actually over in um, oh, very cool. Brooklyn at uh, at the at Zone 1 and Elsewhere space. Uh, it was uh, Oh wow, it was I've them heard great things about that venue. Also, uh, also uh, Ryan, our, the homie Ryan played at that show too. Uh, yeah. You know, under Ryan, under the name Ryan De Robertis. De no Robert way. Re yeah, he played a set at, as well at it. Uh, I got a little photo of uh, me and him and Meishi and everybody else on stage. Oh, that's stage. too cool. I post that on Definitely Twitter Definitely jealous. Uh, so mm -hmm. the, the name of the release is Assemblage EP by Xyloid, X-Y-L-O-I-D. So whether you check out mm -hmm. Xyloid, um, Trash Ghost, or um, Loft Tapes, I can recommend all three, especially if you like favorite I, adjacent stuff. Saturn Foo. I see, I see Saturn Foo saying, I'm trying to see Roller Girl. Man, I'd, I'd love to see I'd love to see Roller Girl live. Uh, I think he's mostly doing like soundtrack work and stuff for like actual, uh, like, big like tv series things are you nowadays. serious i didn't know that right? that's amazing right is i think i don't know maybe someone else knows more about that than i do he's wonderful though uh wow. but yeah uh, uh, any uh, any others any no other man rocks? that's it for me if you want to take us away with a hot take before we introduce the guest yeah sure absolutely and um oh i see uh I see, I see Simple Syrup in the chat right now as oh, well. Oh, very cool. And let me just like, let's do like a quick shout out to the album Make Me Float, which if you guys haven't listened to it yet, you really should because it's a, it's a really, really fun vibe. Absolutely. The whole thing is just an excellent jam from start to finish. It's one of my favorite albums that's come out uh, recently. And uh, I know I'm not doing the music right right now, but I just saw him in the chat. So thumbs Dude, up to that there album. Is never, if you haven't listened there's never it's a shortage of shout casual. outs. <laughs> Leave it out on business casual right now. So oh, very uh, cool. pick up the tape if they're still available or <laughs> stream it. Hell yeah. Um, hot take. I think that the thing that we should discuss is probably the most, uh, the, the biggest thing I think on a lot of people's minds right now when it comes to physical media <laughs> in the independent world is um, these mainstream artists coming in like Adele, right? Oh, and no. Backing up. Backing up the fucking vinyl plants, right? Backing Isn't up. that probably the biggest take to talk about right now in general? What? Let's oh, get some opinions man. on that. Give How us some fucking do we opinions. Feel about the and like you know it's just funny too because like you read these interviews about like Ed Sheeran being like I could barely get my vinyl out because Adele's booking up all the plants and there's like only oh, wow. three or four and and I'm like yeah fuck you Ed Sheeran. <laughs> like, so it's I'm, affecting other mainstream your, artists too. Your gripes about how like you and five other people can't completely monopolize the vinyl plants right now he like and you're like oh yeah me sure. and cold player trying to get our vine guy go fuck yourself man and honestly <laughs> um you know uh i honestly like i ah, fuck adele too man fuck this shit Who fucking, why are we why are we doing this why we're like i don't like i don't i think this is stupid like i hate this shit man i i you know at the end of the day, like I'm still like a punk rock kid at heart from like you know the night like the fucking early '90s and shit. So like I still like hold on to those like little lessons I learned back then before we all started really accepting mainstream artists and mainstream and major record labels as like as like okay and like oh stop being so hard on people and stop being so hard <laughs> on the mainstream artists. Fuck it, man. I don't give a fuck about the they mainstream artists. They can take artists. it. They'll fuck themselves. I hate the fact that they're taking up all the vinyl plants. And, um, you know, maybe that's a hot take. Maybe I'm being curmudgeon right now, but I don't know. I um, my, gut, my gut reaction when I hear these things is fuck you. But, like, so, I understand maybe that's – maybe they, I'm being a little bit too reactionary, a little bit too snobby when I act like that. And, like, I'll rein myself in. But at the end of the day, like, like I don't get it. Like, this is – I mean, I guess it speaks more to the vinyl plants and the system in place how itself. How are there only, like, three but vinyl also, plants But also, like, worldwide. I really just don't like – I really just don't like it when, like – um, mainstream artists are like on a whim. 
on on a whim are like, I'd like to try that too, and like kind of just invade this space that's usually occupied by independent artists and independent artists depend upon as a source of income and a source of promotion and a source of generating interest in their music. Right. The way that a lot of independent artists will generate interest in their music is releasing in that format. And you know, because then they have a bigger uh, platform to display their art, to display their music. It's like a for them, it's a big deal. For independent artists, it's a big it deal, is. and almost like a right and like a big like a real honor when they get to release on vinyl. You know what I mean? It's it's like a dream. And then just this is a dream for the independent artist, just because mm-hmm. of the history that's tied to vinyl for independent music, and the <laughs> fact that a lot of them are now not able to do that or have to wait yeah. you know twelve months. Like that sucks. <coughs> like I remember the first time I had something pressed on vinyl that was like a big deal for me. You know, right and. Um, you know, uh, you know. So you how know, are there so only like, like three I hate places I really in don't the like world? It. And I understand that I vinyl. shouldn't be so hard, but like, also, I don't really. What, what's that? I mean, that's the thing too. Is like, yeah, well, like maybe this is a wake up call that there that that vinyl is is a viable and lucrative option for people, and let's make some more vinyl plants, right? Like, I guess like you know the other yeah. side to this is is that right? But. Um, but man, I really hate mainstream artists, and I mean, also like, my, I mean, I know that's not what I should be saying, and I know it's like, you know, people can like what they like, and that's okay, and it's true, and it's just, oh boy, just my gut reaction is to say, oh my god, you. like I don't know, I really just, I, really I feel just, that on a like, spiritual level. I really level. like, I really hate, I really hate hegemies. like I really hate like like the hegemony thing of like. Well, you know, it's popular, but that's okay. We'll all accept yeah, yeah. it, and it's, it could be there. I like no that. man, like look at man. Fuck her. There's a million other people that sound like her probably that could also do that. She can move over and give some space to them. Other I guess it's just that proof just that tape is the talented. most punk rock form of physical media. Yeah, I mean, I guess like, you know, there is the other side to this, and like, um, you know, maybe it does mean uh, people need to, you know, like I know there's the idea. There's the other. Uh, there's the other side to this too. That I, and like I, I saw like a tweet from like David, you know, Hong Kong, who's just like, well, maybe now. You know, amongst the shit posts, there's always like maybe one or two things that are salient and is like, you know, okay, well, maybe people need to become more creative with the way that they really, the way independent artists release their music. They need to think about new options. And that's true. That's a valid, I don't say it's a valid idea, but fucking vinyl is pretty cool. Like, yeah, vinyl is cool true. because it's so big and it's so fun to look at and it's so beautiful to hold that piece of media. You know what I mean? And like, audio really files love quite them. like it. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess, you know. <sighs> You know, I and it's not like you know. And, and at the end of the day, to tell you the truth, at the end of the day, I actually like cassettes more. You know what I mean? Oh, it's a weird thing to say, but I I know Lux is in the chat right now, and I know she prefers cassettes as well. I'm always biggest fan for cassettes because I just think they're a very interesting form of media. I just think I like the idea of how fully defunct that media is, and how kind of relatively anytime you try to make it cool, it's still a little uncool. And I like the fact that it degrades. I like the fact that you cannot choose where you start on a cassette tape, that wherever you play oh, is wow. where it begins, and you must now follow that journey. Like, I think that's an interesting concept, too. So mm. I am still, like, number one fan for cassettes above all else. But, um, but you know, I just really, I mean, but vinyl's still really cool, and I don't like the idea of these independent artists not getting the chance to mm-hmm. do this or being pushed back. You know what I mean? Thoroughly agree. Well, anyway, thoughts? Anybody? What are we saying? Yeah, in the chat so right a lot now? of people doing? in the and chat also, are I saying. Oh, wait, wait. Actually, let me back off for one second. Really, and then I'll get you get back to that because, like, I feel like I said a lot of mean things about Adele a second ago. She can take and, it. And I feel just something written. I feel that I'm like, you know, like I shouldn't be so hard on on people for who are just doing what they love. You know what I mean? And have been able to make a successful career out of it. But like, man, it's just like. You know. Yeah, but we ah, wouldn't do yeah. that. We, we wouldn't space. jam up the. <laughs> artist. I feel bad. I, I'm not this curmudgeon. Yeah. We wouldn't that. jam up but the presses like that. We would want there to be room at the table for other people. So I hope other people. Yeah, understand I just that remember I like it was such a huge myself. Yeah, like I'm. Yeah, I remember what a huge deal it was when like groceries sold those 500 uh, vinyls, and I remember like, wow, that's Shout so out cool. Groceries. Good for you. I can't believe that like an independent artist from this little nas- nascent scene mm-hmm. was like was able to do that, and then like. Well, will they get the opportunity to do that again now? If these right. other artists keep taking up the space, you know? So people know. in the chat are saying, bring back CDs. What do you think about that? I don't really like CDs that much. I think Why they're not? like, I don't like them. I just, I don't, <laughs> it's fine. And everyone can like them if you like them. I, mean, I just to produce. I know, 
Well, they're flimsy and um, True. nothing terribly Once special about them. They get it. they they get scratched and that's it. Like if a vi if like a if a if a if a cassette gets scratched, it almost becomes more interesting occasionally. But if a CD Fair. gets scratched, it's just I know CDs are so disposable <clears> too. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, you can, all you can really do is I, I'm not a big fan of CDs. Um, but that's you know that's all good. You know what I mean? Like that's just my opinion, and you know I'm not right or wrong. I just if if you're gonna do something on physical media, I prefer almost any other version of it to a CD. Uh, I prefer a floppy disk version. I'd prefer oh, wow. a vinyl version. A I would Game definitely Boy prefer Advanced a cassette version. A Game Boy Advance cartridge for sure. A old CD is just um tube. just doesn't it just doesn't it doesn't um it doesn't uh, enamor me in the same way that the other media does, and that's just me. You know, I'm not right. You know, whatever. Uh, just, just I doesn't. I mean, um, you and I kind of came up while CDs were everywhere. So I don't. That I'm not surprised. Under me. I, I, well, be yeah, but that's the thing. It's like they just like were everywhere, and like they were so ubiquitous, and it was so easy to burn them yourself, True. and like didn't Fair. take much work to even do it. Um, but that's just my opinion, and you know, I, it's, that's it. That's all that is. Nothing big. Nothing. Nothing. You know, it doesn't mean that the format is is that it, it's still it's great format if you like it, and other people want to do that. It's great. Um, not a big fan myself. I'm just not. I don't. I'm not. It doesn't put me under a spell in the Fair. same way that other physical media puts me under a spell when you I have to frame engage a CD. with it. I don't get. I can't engage with it in in an interesting way. The same way I engage with. Uh, the other forms of physical media in an interesting way. There's a very physical thing where I have to put the tape in. There's a very physical thing. If it's a floppy disk, I can, like, I have to find a computer to even fucking play it. Like, um, if it's a vinyl, I have to take it out. I have to look at the inserts, and they're really big, and I have to hold them with two hands. A CD True, is just so, right. um, so, um, pragmatic. It's so pragmatic. That's the problem with it to me. The other ones are sort of an interesting journey, and a CD feels very pragmatic. But that's just... True me and that doesn't mean that i have right. a feeling and one of anything, the and it doesn't mean that i don't love fan. my cds that i have other one probably hey man, and i them. still buy cds from the artists that put them out and i still love me them. too i just bought um, one from groovy kaiju just the other day and i love it it says yeah, thank man. you skeleton lipstick and thank you young shiro on the back of it I know, so i had I to have got it. some vocal there's vocal i have vocal samples on that mm -hmm. yeah ah Oh, so damn. fun. Save that one. Anyway, I'm not right or wrong. Can we bring on? You want to bring on? Yeah, iPad? I want to know which one of them loves CDs and which one hates CDs. And besides, Man, Will has. Once uh, again, I. Will has something to show us, yeah. anyways. So, all right, I boys, that, welcome yeah. to the chat. Go ahead and unmute yourselves. What up? Yo. What's so, for up? anybody that doesn't good. know, I'm pretty sure everybody does, but that's Nathan in Rail and Will. I click together. Will has his own solo work and is part of the noise band, the Gallstones. Do you guys do cuck stuff still or not really? Uh, when we can. Yeah. yeah. But just not really like on our, uh, not really on my like. Not on your radar right now. I'm gonna boost your audio yeah, real quick. Definitely yeah, help us out on audio right. levels chat if you guys don't mind. But uh, all right guys, what do you think uh, about CDs and what do you think about Adele? First of all, <laughs> I think Will can see these nuts. Second of all, Right. Said that already. Oh, yeah, I'm about to Anyways. kick Mason and we just started. So, <laughs> CDs, CDs cool. CDs are, are cool. I like them. But, that being said, they are not nearly as cool as tapes or vinyl. And they're so disposable. They're like landfill waste, pretty much. And, like, You're feel like every, C that. every CD is just, like... What a hundred percent Electronica did with their I'll Try Living like this CD, per, like perfect, beautiful, like mm -hmm. one of the best, like, and like it makes sense, you know, to have it on a, on a CD and you know, yeah. seeing it like that and with the yeah, I forget it what does. They, uh, the digi packs or whatever. That's yeah, what yeah, called. digi packs are like, definitely yeah. better. That but, does make sense. But just looking at like a, a jewel case with a little fucking piece of paper in it. It's something about it just doesn't, it doesn't hit me as much. It's just like, yeah, it's a, it's a CD, but it, like there's there's only one thing to look at, you know, the the art on the on the jewel on the jewel case and the CDs, never not normally not decorated or anything. But when you when you get a tape or a record, you get all these different aspects: the J card, the inside of the J card, the the outside, the the printing on the tape itself like the colors it's just a whole I go back to what you said earlier though 
about CDs being like landfill material, like I'd say that like tapes and records, like also, you know, CDs is just like the last form of physical media really. So like we see a lot more of them, but like if you like are looking for music other than like Vaporwave or if you're just looking for tapes in general, there's a fuck ton of tapes that are all garbage and like true. single tapes, like one song yeah. on it. True. Like a, true. I all of that stuff. True. Um, is a lot of garbage. I, I think that the thing for me is that the accessibility of it, like even though you know it's super useful, you know you have a CD player in your car, you have everything as a, like a CD player. Even though the accessibility of it makes it like, uh, uh like really convenient and all that it just like you know i burned a cd when i was six years old i don't know how to dub a fucking tape or true or make a lathe cut or, or press a fucking vinyl we all like, yeah we will all can like, you turn your gain up just a little bit bro people in the chat are saying um, they have yeah. trouble hearing you that that does sound much better i think can you hear yeah it, it's worked better when i talk directly in the mic it does yeah. but it does. i was gonna say that cds are just like um, like feel lame because uh, that's what we like kind of grew up with I think but that's I will say too. that in my opinion they're the lamest you know like kind of objectively the lamest man um, mm -hmm. because like they like just like I don't know like they're never that like this I this is the one CD I have I have two Tommy other, Wright the third I have two Nice. I have a two live crew CD and uh, no yes, way. <laughs> Jesus is yeah. a CD that I got as bootlegs from the like gas station down the street. Unbelievable. That's actually the funnest thing about CDs right there is the fact that because they're so accessible, like I know that when I go to a record store sometimes and I just want something cheap, I go to the used CD section True. and I look for uh, a gem. You know, I look for an interesting find. It's like the first place I go because there's still like a dollar. So like I do have fond memories of CDs in like when I would go to the used section and I'd just try and see if I could spot a really special record there, a really special for cheap, you know what I mean? For really cheap. And then I'd have something yeah. to play in my car. And I didn't care that much if I lost it because I just usually would I'd find something that I kind of like half liked <laughs> but never really had a chance to listen to. And I could experience that album and I could do it pretty cheaply. And, you know, that's like an interesting or what you mentioned. The other thing is like, you know, there's a because CDs are so accessible and we're so cheap that there's a lot of crazy shit that's on CDs. Yeah. So you can go to the gas station and, right. and like find some random Ooh, like, fucking album that I don't even know that like the guy who works there released or exactly. something yeah. hasn't released. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of fun. The, 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 it's the, the most working thing, class method. The bootlegging thing, yeah. What I, I think is the dopest is because like it just made like a, like illegally sharing music easier like, yeah I, I have another one of these cds that i got from the gas station that's like megan the stallion's first album oh yeah like, that's not on any physical media at all what like, yeah like no way put right. it out unbelievable and so, that's a very good point don't, don't you have hella you know, bootleg, have bootleg like vhs bit. tapes too i think yeah i have a fuck I feel like you told me you had hella VHS. bootleg vhs's that's a really interesting point that Will brings up is that like I do remember that the first time that I wanted to get things that were never out and on any other form of physical media, you know, my friend who had it and downloaded it from a file sharing website put it on a CD for me. You know what I mean? Right. And that was like how I got access to a lot of really obscure shit. For, for the like you could do that with tapes back sure. in the day. That's why tapes were such a like thing that people were like, oh no, like tapes are coming out like you can record music onto these things yeah there was a huge panic first. about it yeah but like cds made that even easier yeah and like that was also in like kind of like cds existed in napster days you know yeah mm -hmm. so it's like i feel like that we can kind of credit a lot mm. of this um ideology we have towards like free information and free mm -hmm. art uh, um to cds and to like illegally downloading sites you know wow yeah that's a really good point i didn't even think about it like that but that's an interesting point there is a bit of 
a rebellious uh, spirit behind the CD. Interesting True. point. Yeah. True. I will also quickly bring up that um, my hot take, my first hot take is that Zune was infinitely better than iPod. Absolutely oh, was. Wow. Because I'm... it invented streaming. The Zunes were the shit. I had like two really? of those. I didn't never had an experience with the Zune. You so never Zune's had a Zune? invented streaming. I never had a Zune. Zune, Zune invented streaming by, because iPod, you had to buy the song like mm. for $1.99. And then like what download 99 it. Ninety nine cents, not a dollar ninety nine. Whatever. And then oh, and then you could like things. share it with somebody. You could like wirelessly share the song. Yeah. They could only play it like ten times like, or whatever. Was, it was, it, it was called squirting. It was called squirting. Yeah, it was not called squirting. Song with someone's called squirting. I'm not kidding. I'm really? It, it, it yeah. How yeah. fun. The but they yeah you you just had to like plug in your Zune to charge it on your computer and then it would sync. Wow. Um, yeah. Really sync with your sync software was terrible, so, but yeah, I mean the Zune still was amazing. But in the early days, like that shit, that shit was fucking tight. Like I never had to buy any music. I just like my parents got my dad like um, was a uh, his Microsoft was a client of his, so like he got all this Microsoft crap, and so we had to use all the Microsoft crap being in Seattle. So that's why I got <laughs> stuck with Zune, but. I quickly realized, like, I could literally listen to whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, it, and if I didn't like it, I didn't need to have paid for it mm. at all. Uh, when everyone else had to like buy all their shit, and so I feel like I've listened to a, a shit ton of music. I was able to listen to a shit ton of music at like a really early age because wow. of that. <laughs> Hermod one one seven says my Zune still works. I have t like twenty thousand songs still on it. Wow, I'm pretty sure yeah, I met Hermod one one seven in virtual memory that twenty seven. That guy on was it? cool. That's, That's a lot of songs. Are they all one twenty eight? You could also go on the internet on that shit before you could on an i iPod Touch. Really? Oh, like, Fanticat yeah. is here. What's up, Fanticat? Oh, what's up, Fanticat? Oh, what's up, Fanticat? Miss you, buddy. Buddy, say hi, also, Fanticat. Also, Dynamic Frequency. Check, you check Thank you for you tuning in for the first time. Before it had a touch screen. You could go on Oh, and hi, Disco. On, yeah, you true. Know, buddy. And instead of that stupid scroll thing, it was up, down, left, right, yeah. select in the middle. It made more yeah. sense. Nah, this, the scroll wheel was, was cool. Okay, you know, the scroll like, wheel was cool, but it wasn't intuitive unless you had somebody show you, like... Yeah. I, I still remember when I got my first iPod, like... I thought that was the coolest shit of all time. I, I could pull, like in 2007, I could play Sonic the Hedgehog for the fucking Sega Genesis on. Oh, you the had an iPod, iPod Touch. The dinky little. No, yeah. I'm talking about the no, iPod that's... Nano. You could play that on a Nano. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, there was a way to do that. There were games <laughs> on Zune. And that's the thing. Is like why i thought zune was lame and like everyone thought zune was lame is because like apple had the like you know the games and like the mm -hmm. movie like you could do that on Zune. yeah mm -hmm. games right. and movies on zune but like it just didn't have like apple had the like fucking monopoly on all that shit they did like you couldn't play fucking flappy bird on it on your zune and <sighs> so you were uncool <laughs> and yeah. honestly i'm an apple guy i'd say like i have a mac and Same. an iphone and i like those more than windows but the zune i gotta give it to the zune i had a windows phone <laughs> uh, <like laughs> you had a windows I phone <laughs> holy shit I had a, like nokia lumia shit. or whatever it was it was whack, but it was it was it was funny. You know, I feel like there if you like, live in the Seattle have... area, you have to get a Windows phone. The the thing Literally. the thing is is I had an Android phone. It was like my my third like my second phone ever, and like we had the first flagship Windows store in our mall, and they had this oh boy uh they <laughs> they had this trade in deal. It's like doesn't matter what Android phone or any other phone you have. Trade it in, get a free brand new Windows phone. And I was like, that sounds like a deal. <laughs> oh, wow. and there was a whole line like going out the store for this for this deal. And I did it, get the phone, and like the it just didn't have any apps. It didn't. And then if you ever wanted time. to remove your Windows account, you had to reset the whole phone. Yeah. It wasn't well, like iCloud or app, Gmail. The apps that like you wanted, like I just remember all of the apps were like 
shit <laughs> like They're that some like third party made <laughs> that, that ran like whatever app was supposed to run. Like it was so boof. I, I remember like people were like, "Hey, do you have Instagram?" And I was like. No, I have a Windows phone. I, <laughs> I know, right? I have Winstagram. I, remember, I literally remember it. Like Winstagram? Going, my, <laughs> my parents are Android people That's to this good. day. And I remember, like, my first, like, real smartphone was a Windows phone. And I went to the store because everyone had that shit by, the, mm-hmm. by this time. Everyone had an iPhone. And I was like, oh, I'm hella excited to get a phone that can do all that shit. And they're like, oh, get the Windows phone. It does everything that an iPhone oh, no. would do, but better or something. And I'm like, okay, all right, sure. And so I got it. And, like, I remember going to, like, download specific apps or, like, something like that that I knew. And it was, like, doesn't have. And I, like, looked it up and it was like, oh, yeah, Windows phone doesn't have Jack. And I was like, fucking hell. Like, I remember right. where I was. I was at my brother's <laughs> soccer game. And I was just so pissed. <laughs> Bro, do you guys remember the fucking remember? Fire Phone by Amazon? Oh, that was a disaster. That, that shit only tanked, for man. Like two months. I was so happy to see something Jeff Bezos made completely and utterly crash and burn. It's it's funny to see these sort of like the phone wars, you know what I mean? That kind of occurred at that time period. And, yeah. Um... <clears throat> yeah, like I had a um, Motorola... I would just get my parents' phone. Like, they would have a phone, and then they'd get new phones, and they'd give me the old one. And it was a smartphone by all intents and purposes, but it had, like, the slide. Oh, I remember those. Type in the... Yeah. It it was Motorola, and it was black. My mom had that that phone. My (laughs) first phone. And that shit. All right. I have a question for you guys really quick. Do you guys, speaking of squirting, I don't think that's real. Hold on. No. All right. <laughs> I, I, I I still don't believe that you really that it's really called squirting when you share a song from a zoon. But I, I really wanted to go back to that. I wanted to know if you guys share each other music very often. Yeah, we're always texting each always. other. Shit. Always, always. Yeah. I didn't mean oh, to like, kill the phone yeah, conversation, but like, literally, no, please. No, I think just, we can. This, I think we've yeah. done enough of the phone yeah. talking. Let me, my, <laughs> let me look at my text conversation with Nathan. It will we'll literally, like, we literally just, like, sent some shit to each other, like, last night. I remember Will s- sent me, like, some Russian, like, children's rap music, and he was like, Oh Bro. my god. No, are you no, guys no. usually pretty, wow. are you guys usually pretty spot on with the recommendations? Like, are you pretty good at knowing what the other person will appreciate, or? Yeah, yeah. You uh, guys have the same sensibilities and the same sense of humor, too, and, uh. Yeah, yeah well, I. Those things, yes, but I know what Nathan will like for sure. Like, oh. I don't know. Like, I'm sure Nathan knows what I like. Yeah, like, for the most part. Will, will likes shit that's like... Will will like anything where it's just like guitar going... This, and some guy going like, I am the egg roll man. I have a Motorola or some shit. Like, <laughs> you like that experimental so, shit, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you have? Can you um? Can you attach a, a band to that you would compare that to? Like a, like a Captain Beefheart. Captain Beefheart. That's okay, what so I, I will... was really gonna guess. Like that's, that sounds very Captain Beefheart. Gentle, you're gentle, right. gentle right. giant. Like Will just, listens. That's to, the one I was gonna will say. Listens, gentle giant. Will listens to so much music that's just like the flower blooms delicately <laughs> in the. You're the one that has a Mort rock. Garson shirt. Yeah, Mort Garson is. That's different. True. Nathan, <laughs> Nathan, like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I listen to like a lot of shit. I do listen to a lot of prog. Prog is probably one of my favorite okay. genres, which is I, I think what interesting Nathan is, uh, referring to. But yeah. Nathan, <laughs> like, for the longest time, only ever listened to um, dubstep, like EDM, <laughs> like, in high school, right. and. Love I remember, it. like, love it. Slowly getting Nathan to listen to other shit. Like, I remember showing him, uh, like, Garden of Delete when it came out. Oh, hell nice. yeah! And I was like, Yo, that's like, a really nice way to transition. It is uh, into uh, some some other things. The thing that, that really good, well done with that choice. That's yeah. Yeah. that was a good the, idea. The thing that really got me transitioned was Death Grips. 
Did you okay, see? Very I remember cool. like, that makes a lot of sense like too. 20, yeah. 2014, 2015, we we're in our radio class together, and Will showed me oh, wow. Lost Boys by Death Grips, and I was like, shit, oh, nice. this, is, this is crazy. Like, this is like kind of right up my alley. Like, wow, I thought you just listened to like. My hard drive, my hard drive. So, I don't well, know. so what's Man, something really, that you put Will on? I really onto? love Nathan's prog rock lyric work here. This is phenomenal. Me too. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I want to know something that you put Will onto because we've heard a lot about what Will put you uh -huh. onto. What happens yeah. if it goes the other way? I Good put question. Will. I put Will onto like some like electronic dubstep shit, like kind of like 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 what. Like Nathan put me onto Justice. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. That's Seriously. a good one. Nathan oh, wow. Nathan That's a really good a one. A lot of stuff that like, like I listen to a lot of like fringe stuff and like, I don't know, like, but in doing that, I kind of have skipped over a lot of the classics. Right. And I feel right. like Nathan has shown me a lot of stuff. Like Nathan and I had a little bit of a fight about Bloghouse. Bloghouse is good. Like, at I, I, I haven't gone that deep into it, but like Sebastian and like all that Ed Banger shit is, is yeah. fire. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, do you, do you not like you can you can keep Cross the by Justice? Do you not like Cross by Justice? I love Cross by Justice. Yeah, I, I feel like that's more like French House. Well, yeah, but like, the, have you ever listened to Sebastian? Like. I didn't mean to derail the conversation as far as my dislike of Blockhouse, but uh, <laughs> I'll, you can you can sure uh, slip me some out. tracks later on, and I'll listen to the whole album in honor of Will. Yeah, no, for sure. But I I, I did get Will and into... you've never listened to Sebastian Isaac. Okay, I've heard Sebastian. I just I don't remember it being super remarkable sounding. I knew, like, Maybe I heard the wrong song. Um. I don't know. Check out check out the album Total. Uh, okay. Very good. I want to hear what Nathan got me into because I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm all. I'm also trying to think. It's just <laughs> it's just like random. Justice like, is pretty solid. Like you said, is um, like the full album. Like I do listen to full albums, mostly. Mm. And, yeah. Well, you're um, a prog rock guy. Nathan, yeah, that, that definitely seems to come with the territory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nathan definitely listens to like more songs or like did in the time we yeah. like. Yeah, well for we, me, like, for, for me now it's like because it's so accessible. I'll go on Spotify if I find a song that I really like. I'll go on Spotify. I'll listen to the whole song like a million times. And I'll be like, this is fucking awesome. And I'll, I will check out every other song on the album in small intervals, like play like thirty seconds, skip ahead, and be like, yeah, I'm right. not crazy about this. I'm like. Because, like, you know, I have listened to full albums and just wasted my fucking time on it. You like, know? just There's hoping that like it would get better. Song. That's yeah, some exactly. shit that I do. Yeah. It's but worth like, it sometimes. I am, a, like, a full album guy in the sense of if there is a full album that I like, I will listen to that whole album hundreds of times. Like, yes, I... Yes. Yeah. I feel Quiz like. asked if I like the new Porcupine Tree, and the answer to that is, I don't really like Porcupine Tree. I don't really like New Prog. Like yikes. Um, what's his, What's that one band? Mars Volta. Like uh, oh yeah. You don't like I the don't Mars like... Volta? No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. all right. You like at the drive-in though? I tried recently too. Wow. Do you listen to at the drive-in at all? Uh, Sorry, say it again. Do you listen to At the Drive In at all, though? You know the band prior yeah, to like Mars Volta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I like respect it, but like I don't oh, know. I love At the Drive In. It's very different than Mars Volta. That's not prog. That's like you know, sort of like angular punk music. Yeah, for you know? sure. That's not prog at all, though. At the Drive In, no. not at all. All that music yeah. is old and boring. And Wait a minute, isn't there a list? At the Drive In is definitely like, not. Like at the Drive In is you iconic, at, dude. You, you would love it. Did you ever listen to the drive-in? You're not a fan, Nathan? You ever listen to them? Or we just uh, not I, like I, don't, I don't know. This is what I'm getting. Dude, 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 dude I'm <laughs> going to send you an at the drive-in live performance. Okay. You will see what I'm saying. You'll do. love it, man. Actually, honestly, he's gonna be like, "Oh, this is this isn't made on a computer. Boring." No, <laughs> man. He listens to like you. It listen, was recorded Nathan, on you, one. like you. You got like a soft spot for new metal, yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, this is like better. This is like 
This is like <laughs> you could listen to. You'll like this a lot. It's not new metal, but it's definitely like you maybe would see this band possibly tour with like a Deftones. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, like I don't, I don't dislike any of that music or anything. I, I like it. I enjoy it. But oh, like, listen, I wouldn't recommend you something don't seek to you it out. if I didn't yeah, think no, 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 it no. might speak to you in a little bit. I, like I, I would not recommend like a, a, a certain part. This band, this band, I would recommend considering who you are and what you like. I yeah, no, thank you. I I understand, but what. I'm trying to get under what like Will's been talking about, like how I like only like music made on a computer and shit. It's just like <laughs> you, you do, you do. I feel like I feel like you like, showed so me a list more. of artists that you had never heard. Oh yeah, and it's all like it's all like <laughs> you want to read that list like, off for me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I'll read it right now. Radiohead. I've I've only heard one or two Radiohead songs in my life. Oh no, um, that's awful. And and this is not for a lack of me trying to show him Radiohead for like a really long oh, time. Oh man, <laughs> no, nah, man, you didn't try to show you. You weren't like yo, listen to this Radiohead song. You were never <laughs> like that. I for sure. What in high school? I for sure. Put that one at the top no, of your no, list. No, no, no. Well, you, if you did, I don't remember. It's made on computers. You I like it. This is a yeah, really sure. fun back and forth. I'm enjoying this. You guys are funny. <laughs> you guys are great. I love it. Um, love the friendship vibes happening right now. It's really it's really fun. Um, <laughs> that also, list? my favorite Henry Cow album is the first one, um, Henry Cow Legend or whatever. Whoever oh yeah, I forgot to. I'm doing really bad at reading the chat today. Thank you. Yeah. Will. Oh, it's it's tough. I, I I mean I don't know. I mean I understand, but you know Nathan brings up a point, which is that like the music that speaks to you is the music that speaks to you, and sometimes it is hard to sort of um, you know, I guess take yourself out of that mindset. I don't that, know. I don't that list is to... a lot longer than just Radiohead, though. Oh wait, do we? Wait, wait, wait. There's more on the list, right? Can we get back to that the list? Yeah. Is long as shit. About that. <laughs> that's on the list. I, I'm I'm gonna get, skip over just the do, ones where give I some highlights. Where, yeah. All right, David Bowie. Um, you never listen to anything by David Bowie. <laughs> You're gonna be wow. saying that after every one of these, too. By the way. <laughs> what? No. Uh, uh, I've never heard a single Talking Heads song. I've You've never, never heard, heard a single. Sing no, I've never. Oh, see what I'm saying? You're gonna say that after every one. I've never heard a single Joy Division song. <laughs> I've heard two Animal Collective songs. I've Whoa! Never heard you ever heard Love Will Tear Us Apart? I don't know. I bet he would recognize I, it I, if he heard it. Love, love will tear us apart. I've never heard it. God oh, speed you, Black Emperor. Oh man. I, I've never heard the Strokes or Sufjan Stevens. He's never fuck heard Sufjan Stevens. And fuck Sufjan. Whoa! I've never heard, I've never heard Weezer. Oh, fuck Weezer. Heard Weezer? So that's kind of hard to... That's, now, that's impressive. Heard, it's really okay, hard okay. to not hear Weezer at some I've point. I've heard fucking... You've never heard Island Say It Ain't So? The other one, but like... Weezer, so, the, the thing like I would say probably. about some of the bands on that list, particularly like something like Joy Division or Talking Heads, is that, well, you know... um, there's interesting lessons about song structure in, the, in that kind of music um, yeah. that I take with me when I listen to it. Now, listen, Nathan, I don't really listen to too much instrumental, <coughs> instrument-created music these days myself, to tell you the truth. Like, I don't really listen to a lot of instrument-based music anymore. I did a lot when I was younger, I mean, because that's what was what's what we listened to back then, you know what I mean? Like, I listened to a lot yeah, of microphones punk, a and lot stuff. of indie music, a lot of, like... Cabin hardcore, jazz. a lot of things like that. Cab yeah, Cabbage Jazz also. Yeah, a lot of like 90s. Just grungy stuff. Uh, you know, proto e stuff. emo and grungy. Oh, grunge stuff. I mean, that's what I, I mean, I'm mineral, older. Like I'm older. Mineral? That's what I grew up with when I was in like elementary school was like around that era, right? So I did listen to like a lot of these bands, but like I don't really anymore too much. I don't, like I have a guitar. Same. I don't really play it that much anymore. Um, yeah. Uh, so you know, but you know that there are lessons to be learned from those bands, and um, it's, it's you know it's I, it's amusing that you haven't checked it out. It actually kind of makes you an interesting producer because you don't really well, he, have that have that sort of base that a lot of people do. Yeah. Well, right. here's the thing. So yeah, because a lot of people have that base, all the artists I listen to are inspired by fucking Radiohead or. Metallica or some shit I haven't listened to before and like all that and they know all about the song structure and they're doing it better now with computers because they have no. access to everything no. well. that they want. No. But well, what, what, what I'm I don't trying, know, I kind of agree with him. 
what, what I'm trying I'm to I'm going to take the no. counterpoint on that as well with Will in a moment, but I'll go but ahead. What, the, the point the point I'm trying to make they is didn't I'm do it first, out, though. I'm cutting out the middleman, well. or not the middleman, but I'm cutting out the, the starting man. It's like a relay race. Like, why listen to Radiohead when I can listen to some shit that was inspired by Radiohead that's way better? This is the wackest because it, thing Because you, you run the risk of becoming derivative by doing that. True. You can run the risk by becoming derivative if you don't go back to the source. Copy, so all those, copy, all like, you might not listen to, like, you might listen to a lot of shoegaze, but you should probably still also go back and listen to Cocteau Twins, you know what I mean? Like, right. you, that's also like never that sort heard of thing. Twins. Oh, <laughs> man. You never heard of Heaven in Las Vegas? Coming. I knew that was coming song next, sir. beautiful. <laughs> but, like, the problem is that when you only listen to the stuff that the people who've already listened to it have listened to it like you want to go back and draw from that well as well because if your heroes are listening to it it's worth checking out a little bit as well so that you can draw a little bit from that dna too and from the dna so you have the benefit of what they're making and what came before it you know what yeah, i mean but the, but the thing is and is, you see the things in that music like the, that they haven't seen and you take stuff from oh what like, a good oh so so well you know, said like, he, Wow, I'm sorry, I interrupted. They, Can you say they, that again? If they're listening to a certain thing, they have their own musical opinions, and they like this music, this part of the song, and they might take influence from that. And if they very find good something, point. You like them, Ooh, they find something that's interesting cool. in that. That's a very that good point. Else, that is your own. Wow, that was really well said. That's, um, what, I'm, that's what I'm you, doing because I listen to so much vaporwave. I yeah. always go back to the original sample and listen to it. You know, me too. Yeah. And like it. Yeah, I, me too. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm obviously just over exaggerating like a lot I, yeah, when I say yeah, that like yeah, Radiohead's boring. It's fun. Whatever. I like it. But like the the, the tr truth of the matter is that like, like that, you know, kind of music, like that, like the origins of everything is interesting and cool and all that. But like, I want to, I, I, I just want to listen to the music that like. I think is really is is like newer, like more. I'm not not newer per se, but like more know, newer. I, I feel that there's the, some the music that sounds like, basically. If you go back so, far enough, it gets kind of boring. Yeah. It, well, like I, in yeah, it 19, does. And music before I can't listen to 19, 60s music and be like music before 1970s. Fuck like that. It all uses don't the know. same palette. I know. It's like listening to no, like that, that, the Velvet true. Underground doesn't use the same palette. It, it, that's from 1967. It uses the same. I palette respect as, it, but I'll be like, oh, that was good. Is, I don't want to ever listen to it again, palette. but I respect it. I see what you're saying, though, Nate. Like you are saying, like you're looking for uh, different types of sounds that were yeah. previously around, and that's true. Like these these producers are using sounds that you didn't hear prior, and that's what right. you're trying to draw your influence from. And I think that's a valid point too. You know, and I, I know Will's gonna be like, "Oh, but fucking Silver Apples and John Weiss or whatever the fuck." He's, but it's like, he's, he's right too. <laughs> like, I mean, that's Bjork's like, yeah, band. I've got to listen to Silver I, Apples. I I get it, but I I like I understand, but at the same time, it's like. That's not my. It's not my thing, really. It's just not my thing. Not your thing. thing. That's fair, I understand man. to an extent because I go through phases of like, yeah, I don't really want to listen to like older music yeah. right yeah. now. I'm kind of in a vibe, but like, I love all music, like any time period, any genre. Like, if I'm like, I can. F I like being able to find something good in any music, whether it be fucking Adele or like yeah. fucking yeah. like some Porter Robinson bullshit or some like you know yeah. like you gotta find that one artist in I, every scene what is it Chris I refer to the Patty Smiths in, Patty that are Smith. exist in every type of music there's, there's gonna be <laughs> something every from music. every the, scene that you're the, gonna at least appreciate there are the, there are the, are the Patty Smiths Patty in, Smith. in every genre you know what I mean the, the truth speakers you know what I mean the, the innovators and the truth speakers and they exist in every type of music and so you, I will, I'm always looking for them myself in any genre, you know, uh, whatever it be. You know, I, I um, yeah, that's the, and I'm always looking for new sounds as well to incorporate into the ones I already know, which is why when I write my music, I actually like my music. I have, I don't know, no, you can't really see right now. Like, there's like a bunch of synthesizers. Oh, over wow. <laughs> a rare look into the magicians. Haunt. Move it over a little bit more, but like, um, you know, I have all that mixed up with like, um, you know, just random like drum machines and 
fucking Casios and all kinds of shit. Too cool. Because like I like the fact that the instruments that I use are a mixture of like some that are like 30 years old, some that are more contemporary. You know what I mean? I might have like a fuzzed out sort of um, 80s vibe in this one part, and then it might all of a sudden morph into like a, a like a, a fucking like EDM style drop. You know what I mean? Right. You know, because I want you know and like. I think it's important for now. Here's the other thing on the other flip side of this. As so, Nathan is talking about always listening, trying to find the new sounds. The problem with some producers is they get stuck in the old sounds and they'll never learn new tricks and they don't want to learn new ideas and they don't want to learn new things. And uh, I think a lot of producers can get stuck in that sometimes. And uh, I, I try personally to avoid that. Like, I am always looking for like new ways to produce music. You know what I mean? Like, incorporate like, nowadays, I will write songs that will incorporate a lot of like LFOs and like rises and drops if I feel like it. And I'll combine it with the old stuff and old ways I used to produce music or old ways I learned to produce music. And, um, you know, I think it's really important for people to continue to add to their arsenal. And I think it is important to also go back and look at those old bands as well, uh, you know. You're That's both right. right. <laughs> You're both right. <laughs> what I was going to say, what Monica said in the chat is like, it was gold. Because Nathan and I do have very different opinions. You have very different approaches, it, too. It's very interesting. It, like, yeah, for sure, approaches. But, like, just like tastes, like, and in Vaporwave, yes. Like, it's kind of like all based on your taste. Yeah. Like, if you're really making it TBH. But, like, since we have that, like, yeah, I think it creates something really unique. Definitely, like I, like with all of my personal music, like like you were saying earlier, Chris, like about like uh, how y you learn one thing and you're like stuck in it. I've kind of been stuck in everything. It follows the the formula of like an EDM song. Like there's an intro, there's a build up, there's a drop, there's you know a breakdown and then an, another drop and everything is like loud and punchy and, and side chained and all that and it, you know it, it's been like that that has been you know the main structure of all the music i make and w because will comes from a different you know background in making music he doesn't think about all the all that technical of stuff like it's it's Will's thinking more about the sound, like and the soundscape, like the, the sound in the moment. Yeah, like the sound I feel in that. the moment. I think about the bigger picture mm, more. Interesting. Like, that's a great so like, yin yang. Wow, that's a really interesting Wait, Will, uh, thing. Will will be like, no, this needs to loop seven and a half times in this like off position here, and I'll be like, no, like I I'm I'm thinking about if I was at a concert playing that live watching an audience try to dance to it or yeah. like or like and obviously you know that's not what all music is it's not all for like people to dance to True. or whatever but like in the in the song on the 1999 sex line uh yeah. black daddy me and will got into this huge heated argument about oh whether uh, about whether the guys the sample of the guy saying daddy should play three times or four times. I said oh, four wow. times. It's right before right. the drop in this big dance song. Streaming. Yeah. And Will's, still like, streaming. Will's like, no, it needs to be three times. And I, like we played it over and over again and got Monica's opinion on it and like Which was biased. Uh -huh. LMAO. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Hey, I Monica mean, knows all. Like, you're right. Like I do that's fascinating like it to be weird like i like it to be a little off because everything is you know for you know oh fucking, boy everything is for and I, it's kind of boring to me so i i try and, and wow make it weird and i do like that working with nathan he forces me to kind of put it yeah, put in a yeah. Bit of a no I, I i i would probably be, I I'd be on the side of saying four and then do the drop myself because i like to do structure as well i would too like, unfortunately but I, I appreciate the people that push me to, be, to, to make sure it doesn't follow the format so much i you respect know what I mean? I it that. but i also know people will be like talking to each other and ignoring it they won't be sitting and listening intently like you want them to be when you play it in but like that's, a club that's what, but that's what we want but that's what we want people to do with our our music. We want them I to will say, we'll pick some badass samples. 
Like I remember you, you talking do. about I'm not you do too, but but I remember Will talking specifically about some of the sample the Middle Eastern artists that you were listening to for um I think it was laundry laundry service? Yeah, for laundry. Yeah. Yeah, around laundry is pretty much when I got into that. And like honestly, because it's weird, because it's not it's usually never in four really. It, it's like uh, it sounds really unique. The Middle Eastern thing, more so especially, is because like I feel like vaporwave is like Asian culture a lot. Uh, because True. like Asia in the like time period or whatever eighties nineties had like such a like pair like like mirror flipped pop music to. Yeah. Um, uh, the United States. Yeah, but it really did. Honestly, City pop is like the opposite of what pop music was in the United exactly. States. Like it has the same True. like it's vibe and structure, which is why it works so well in the genre. But honestly, if you look at any country, um, pop music from that time, it it's also like that. It mm. it also takes from a lot of Western. Honestly, um, since you know World War Two, really most music uh, maybe not in the middle east but most music um most popular music has had some sort of um influence from western music yeah but like in that time period like the fucking like super poppy like like prince sounding stuff michael jackson stuff and mm -hmm. also then into like christina aguilera mm -hmm. sounding stuff like there's a lot more like the production it has got over there and like the like but they still have like like i listen to a lot of older um older foreign music because i like the like traditional stuff like especially middle eastern music the songs are like 40 minutes long and they're mm -hmm. just like ever changing and they have such an interesting vibe and like Do you have a recommendation for someone to listen to an artist particularly a middle eastern artist to listen to because i'd samir love to know saeed personally all the way samir saeed okay. all the way she samir saeed. is i'm gonna the put queen. that into my spotify now actually she like if you that song that psa song is a samir mm -hmm. saeed song and I that's her that. new stuff and if you go all the way back to her old stuff, it's that shit that I'm talking about. It's the traditional. She's been, she's like 63 now. And if you oh, see wow. a picture of her, she's like fucking gorgeous still. She's the, she's a host on uh, Egyptian The Voice. Interesting. And you know but what? She's had this, like, whole, she's had this like ever changing um, musical sound to like traditional stuff in the, uh, late 70s and, and early 80s to hmm. like 80s sounding pop to like so modern timeless. sounding like yeah it, it's it's really crazy to listen to and when you listen to her um you get a lot of recommendations there's a youtube channel i don't know how to pronounce the name of but that's pretty much where i've gotten most of my shit is because like it recommends both stuff and, like and her, listening to her is a great gateway because she has done all of it hmm. you know fascinating uh, my boss and co-worker are lebanese and you know what's funny is that you were mentioning christina aguilera earlier and my boss was like one of the main engineers on all of christina aguilera's like earlier like wow 2000, really 2003 ish stuff like he did like uh, beautiful Okay, that one, you know. Yes, of um, course. And you know they know Samira Saeed and um, Amir Diab and Tamali Mock and like all, like they know all that stuff and it's it's really cool. There's a lot of Coptic Egyptians in this area of Nashville, um, and I am always like talking to them about music, like because they they'll be like oh yeah like i know that shit like and then show me some like crazy shit that i like we oh, have wow. we we have a keyboard at our work called the katron vega k-e-t-r-o-n-v-e-g-a and it's uh it's a lebanese keyboard they imported from lebanon and it's like it's like a digital keyboard with samples and stuff but like 
it's it's crazy impressive it's so cool it's got like all these cool drum presets you know with the full like like super loud drums and it has buttons on it for quarter quarter tones so like oh wow so like you you know it like puts the key up like 25 cents or something so you can play like weird like microtonal shit on it and it's like this it's like the coolest shit ever how much does it cost to rent um, that i don't know no one no one rents it anymore so i was Damn. i was gonna ask Sounds if like i could get it for a while yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna drop my link to my playlist of like dope oh Middle please East. do yeah please do please that'd be do. super dope dude really appreciate um, that because like, you put people onto different stuff like that that's what i like i, I like like because you know what i was saying earlier is like i like um different shit so like the the japanese stuff a lot is like dope but like in vaporwave like i want to like do some different shit like that's like why i love the russian shit too and like yes but like middle eastern like oh every culture has um music you know and like has yeah. a strong um musical uh, like a personality to it yeah personality that's very unique correct i think that um like pop music is, is such a like interesting concept on how it's like kind of taken over everything in in some sort of way or like yeah. pop music it like has a like a larger like just in the way we're all connected now i think that popular music influences mo more cultures mm, but they still true. have like their own sensibility you know that's like <laughs> impressive and unique that like is added so i'm always like any country any culture like i'm trying to figure out what pop music they have like because that shit is always really dope like, oh, like yeah. i find american pop music really boring in comparison i love k-pop music not i'm not yeah. i feel yeah, like that's kind of the wave right now the the k-pop yeah, I, mean, I love k-pop the k-pop in the, the past only... few years is kind of it's kind of it's all sounds like 2013 DJ Snake Major Laser trap music, which is, mm. yeah, I'm not mm. crazy about. But like bef prior to that, like uh, Girls Generation and uh, Shiny and TVXQ and uh, of course AOA and like that. The, there's just so so many cool sounds and like the the, the production's really cool. But I found this I found this record at the silver platters record store in in bellevue where we're from mm -hmm. uh that just had like this cool keith rankin looking album art huh. uh, i was like i wow. don't even know Very what cool. this is it, it's all in korean and then doesn't say anything on it so i can't search it up so i'm just gonna buy it and then i bought it and i was like it was like this amazing like slow okay pop music that i ended up sampling on some millennium edition oh, stuff awesome. and then and then, wow. and then through that, like I just recorded it directly from my record player into my computer and slowed it down. But the, from that, I, f I, I ended up searching it up and found this channel. I'm about to, I'm about to leak my my biggest sample source. Um, oh my god! Oh shit! You uh, heard it here on hot takes. For a lot oh, of music. You heard it here on hot takes. This YouTube channel called Shin Beyond Lee, uh, S H I N B E O M L E E. And like it's just all um, K-pop music and and really cool like Korean just Korean there's like R and B a lot of R and B and like big big band kind of techno like hard like stuff and all from the 90s to 2000s and there's just so much gold I've sampled like maybe 15 songs from from that channel alone wow. and like i i, I think I, I think personally like i love how k-pop it's they're trying to imitate an older era of american pop music almost when they do music it's like, interesting like i feel like 
a lot of 2009, 2008, 2009 K-pop was kind of reminiscent of like R&B stuff from 2003, like, um, and and like uh, what what do you call it? Snap music, snap music, like Lil John or whatever. And I just think, oh, I just um, music. I think that's really cool. Crunk? Like crunk music. Not 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 necessarily crunk. There was this. It was a whole like sub genre of called like snap. Not necessarily. I was gonna crunk. say you're you're a little bit of a uh, an R and B and hip hop like guru. I've noticed whenever you you yeah, jump on turntable, sure. you're constantly playing like old nineties R and B and two thousands like hip hop shit. Me? Yeah. 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 You. Uh, yeah. No. I I, I love. I, ever since we started making. Um, the phone sex album. I've been, I've been like really all about that shit. I'm a big fan of Luther Vandross. I yeah. think Luther mm-hmm. Vandross has like the yeah. best voice of all time, and like his last Phenomenal. album. Phenomenal. Really cuts through instruments. His voice. Yeah. You know what I mean, like it's amazing. It does. It is. That's where Nathan hits the. Is that something you two agree on? Too. Like, is that some yeah. shit you guys agree yeah, on? I feel like we both got into that shit at the same time when he he was living here yeah like we both kind of figured that out like how how do you think we i don't really remember but like i guess we so prom we, promise ring by destiny and trout we were really into that song we were really yeah. into promise ring and from that i looked up the sample found baby face as soon as i get home from work and then i realized yeah. that like um Way you, way you, I love that song. Yeah, te- te- telepath yeah. sample that, then we sample that. Yeah, that was also produced Beatles by Babyface, and yeah. the song Thigh Gap from Classroom Sex Tape. Uh, it's like this weird, like it's like fifties doo wop, which I'm not, I'm, I'm not crazy about that, but the way yeah. that Tech like layered it on top of each other a million times sounds so cool. That was also Babyface, so I just started looking at Babyface and, and showed Will a bunch of songs. And then one day, Will was just like, "What was that one Babyface song?" And like, we found it. It was a mad and sexy, cool girl. And we we're like, "Damn, this shit is awesome!" And then from there, we just started getting into a bunch of two thousands, nineties R and B. Like, I think that was it. Yeah. And, and we fucking... watched um, we watched Juice. The oh, Tupac Juice is movie. wild. Yeah. The one where he's like yeah, super that, evil. VHS. Juice yeah, is watch that. Yeah, Tupac is like the worst person imaginable. Like he's so yeah, evil, yeah. dude. We, we, he's like just shooting everybody yeah. halfway through the movie. He's just like, all right, you're dead. Like I'm just shooting you now. Yeah, that that movie was funny, but the yeah the song that plays in the record store. Uh, when the they're, record hit, they're hitting the lick on the record store. When they're stealing records and he's flirting with the um, like shopkeeper or whatever is the second song on sex line mm. uh, oh wild which is wow. yeah so like we watched that shit and heard that and like yeah. i found you it you guys are mad wow. sample hunters dude yeah it's really interesting how you both got into this uh this this genre this this a period of music around the same time and then it kind of led to the genesis of this album basically is this All correct right. oh yeah yeah, yeah wow. like I remember listening. I was stoned as hell on my back porch, and just with my speaker. And I put on. I, I was looking through Babyface, and I saw the album that that sample is from, "Grown and Sexy." Grown and yeah, sexy. and it was later. I was Grown like, and sexy. Or something. It is, yeah. And so I was like, <laughs> "This is probably Heat." And so I, uh-huh. the mad sexy cool. Like uh-huh. I was like playing that, and then I was like, "Yo, holy shit." This song is it, and then our, we immediately went in and worked for like a few hours. Yeah, on, on that song and got it to pretty much, like Wait, where apart it is from now. it's pretty much where it is now. And that's <laughs> when we were like, "Yo, holy shit!" Like we're doing a whole album, and it's like '90s R&B sex themed. Hell and yeah! Started with the fuck kind of that shit. Yeah, I like that all of but your like, albums kind of have a concept. That's nice. It's That's very, what I want. Kind of a lighthearted yeah. concept. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. Go ahead. Oh no, it's just it's just fun because you can really feel the passion you guys have for that music in that album, and it's just like it's all over. It's all like this. These like you can tell like was like wow, 
they were, they were really excited about what they were doing, and they were really mm-hmm. excited sifting and playing with these samples, and they probably just like had the best time. You know, oh, dude, really watching them play live noise. is also extremely enjoyable. They're clearly having a hell of a time. It, like it, the process of making it, especially like starting to make this stuff, is so yeah. much fucking fun because, especially with this last album, like everything just fell into place so perfectly. Like I feel no. every every early two thousands, late nineties R and B song had like a phone call with a sexy voice and like right yeah yeah they really there's so many that have that i'd say all the albums did kind of like <laughs> like uh, when creating this concept like no wonder a why it's the phone ago, concept now now i get it okay. right <laughs> I clicked, oh, like, it's true. It's right on. It's spot on. Yeah. Without being obvious. That's to... spot on without being obvious. I love mm-hmm. it. It's a spot on like trope that happens in all those songs, and you turned it into like a sex hotline concept. But go yeah, ahead. Like, I didn't mean is, to interrupt. I feel like the thing is with that, and with the previous albums, like we didn't really know like, oh yeah, like we should make it sex line because a lot of these albums have phone shit and like sex line shit or whatever like we yeah. were like this shit is fire i click as a running thing is like kind of has like a technology phone thing to do with it yeah. like that's that was just like an underlying theme and so i was like phone sex lines because i saw those ads all the time yeah and i thought they were cool and then it just happened that all those songs have that shit. Yeah, and it's the same it really with laundry. Did. Unbelievable. Like making laundry, I I was just in a laundromat and I was like, you know, laundromat's pretty fucking vaporwave. I'm gonna make a vaporwave laundromat album, <laughs> and then started sampling <laughs> shit and started making songs. And then I'd be like, damn, doesn't that like shit sound like a washing machine? Like there's just that loop sounds like a washing machine banging against the wall, mm. and like oh damn, ecstasy market like. The theme for that is like a trip or whatever, like yeah. or like a store where you buy like every illegal drug or every drug ever. Ecstasy Market didn't start out as a concept. Exactly, it started out no, as, a, as, as a compilation of tracks that we'd made like from before the first album. Because we wow. always were like, I click is going to be a thing sometime. Yeah. But we never really like got down to it, and so we just made a bunch of random tracks, and then we were like, "Well, fucking this label who shouldn't be named is looking for an album like this. These next couple albums which we had lined up, this one and the one that's gonna come out when it's done, uh, were already like kind of being made, <laughs> and so oh. we were like, all right, well." We don't want to give any of those yet because that shit's really good, and we want to wait until people like will listen to that mm. when it comes out. And so we just threw a bunch of shit onto an album, and then listened to it all the way through, and it's like really fucking cohesive for some reason. Like, yeah, and like it, we're like it was Nathan came up with dude. Ecstasy Market. I came title, up with Ecstasy was, Market in 2017, and like yeah, put like, like <laughs> put like five random like the first like four vape wave songs that ever made i put them on that thing just because i was like whatever i'll I'll put these in here and will will do something and and they just sat there for three years for three whole years and oh damn and then all of a sudden like we were just like here let's what about this like oh what what about this that's in our drafts on Bandcamp? like let's listen to this i was like wow these songs are really good actually and then we we kind of just like I remember I was just laying on the ground on my laptop, just like scrolling through old project files and being like, let's listen to this. I'm like, oh yeah, this is sweet. We can put that on this album. And it all just fell into place. And we spent like a a really long time actually just like grinding shit out for it. Like, yeah, we like would like finish some tracks and like a lot of tracks were made for that album after the fact. Mm. And, uh, but like, I don't know, I really liked it because uh, I don't know, Bandcamp, I don't know if anyone else uses Bandcamp like I do, but like, um, I use the drafted album 
a lot because I'm so into albums. Like, hmm. I'll listen, I'll just throw shit in there and then listen to it and like adjust track listing all the time. Yeah, I do that. I, I like do for that as well. stuff that you guys are yeah. making, you mean like one of your albums? I, yeah, I do yeah, that too. Okay, I, that makes I have, sense. Like, I'm, I have a few of like the undone, like, the, like I'm working on like three albums right now and like they're all draft versions on Bandcamp and I'll listen to Very them cool. uh, in my car. I'll play it off of because it's just easier. To upload yeah. it onto Bandcamp than it is anywhere else for like to listen to. On I did that, I and did then I'll that. move it around. Yeah, I did that for all the thirteen Slush Wave albums I just made. Oh yeah, you that. recently dropped those. Yeah, or you didn't recently oh, yeah. drop them, but you like thought about that. Put, right. to yeah. made people album aware as an album. Like I like putting myself in the position of the listener. Yes. after I'm done with any song, yeah. and I listen to the whole album. Oh as yeah. An album. And Very cool. Make I do that with like DJ sure. sets, but market. for sure. Like we threw all those shit, all, all that shit in a draft, and I listened to it all the way through like it was an album without making any adjustments, and it was like incredibly cohesive. Sans a, oh, a few things, but like that's what like like the first album is a bit different because I was going really hard for the um, theme, but like that shit like just kind of fell falls into place all the time like i feel like it kind of gave me a new outlook as an artist to where like like i liked theme i like themed things and i always wanted i click to be themed you know like every album has a theme uh, yeah i picked up on that really quick but it's like yeah and, and, and like, it's it's hard to not it's hard to it's easy to go overboard with that shit it is and make it kind of like camp like kind of ham-fisted so i think like doing yeah doing this shit has taught me like literally if you just set your intention for what the album should sound like or whatever or like what vibe you want to give or what theme you want to give it whatever you make will somehow align with that and translate mm. So yeah. Like, you know, Interesting. I can add a few phone sounds to the fucking phone sex album. Right. But if I call it phone sex and give it a phone sex album cover, and I had none of that, I feel like it would still have some thing that you would be like the listener. Like you'd you'd create an image. So you project much. the listener would project their own image into it, their, their yeah. own concepts into it. You, you know, because the themes would still be there, and they. The, the listener would probably still fill in the uh, the mental gaps as to how they would interpret that, and it would yeah, it would, they would see it the same way. You're right. You guys get but super immersive with there. it too. Like you had that call in hotline thing, and then for laundry service, you had the blue and orange like Tide Pod <laughs> cassette shells. Yeah. yeah, that was Alex's idea. The oh, yeah. call thing. Why does that not surprise you? Also, me? low key. I think we should give to Alex because like yeah, but he did that Alex is honestly the shit. Dude. Destination Destination Spa, Spa. Yeah. Uh, I, I, they did that and I called it and I was like yo this shit is fucking rad and I was like sex line was already an idea and I was like yo we're doing that shit we're stealing that like <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we couldn't not do that shit like, yeah like that shit's fucking fire and you can still call the number and I still text people <laughs> from hell <the> yeah <laughs> That's so hey fun. Monica has a super good question uh, she says what's to come next with iClick what are you guys inspired by now our, the first album we plan to make, the only album we plan, I, I thought it was just going to be one album, one Bay Boy album that we were going to make, and it was going to be weird and s social media focused, focused okay. on social media and like clickbait and like, I love that crazy yeah, new that's... scrolling through Instagram. If that, that was is, an album, that is it. Our next album, um, is what so yeah like <laughs> iClick was formed because we were on we we used to be on a radio show together and oh wild one of our friends was on it and he said something like we were talking about some social media thing or or the news and he was he said like you know i click with my eye like uh -huh. And no way. I, I immediately was like, yo, like that sounds fucking tight. Like, and I had so much, I so many ideas out the get go. And I was driving Nathan around and I was like, yo, like this is what we're fucking doing. We're making a vaporwave project called iClick 
and the album's gonna be called I Click With My Eye and it's gonna be like super social media theme. And I was really into Giant Claw at the time. Like I think Soft Love Channel key. had just yeah. came out and I was like, this is Love the key. fucking best ever. And I wanted to do some shit like that um, with this theme and like have it be really weird and immersive and like have like an app or something like, and then like, you know, we're always doing a bunch of fucking shit like musically so like it just kind of got passed to the side and then we made a bunch of songs for it mm-hmm. and they were really fucking good and i feel like and this is now when econ started happening and okay. like the vaporwave scene started getting back like to a good point yeah and so we were like we just figured mm, we might just like expand this universe a little bit because like mm-hmm. this shit is really fucking good and we want to wait until like people will listen to things that we release and then yes. we can get on a good label or something like hmm yeah but so you guys are sitting on a lot of material yeah yeah but it, it's like what one album uh, it's, now it, it's, it was it's back then it was all of the albums like <laughs> yeah but the, All the, of these albums, except Laundry and the first one, had been pretty much sat on for a while. Yeah. Well, well the, the, now you're on... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I mean, your, your latest album is on uh, Business Casual. Yeah, that's, yeah, um, that's you know, there's, great. There's, there's, there's no, there is no greater curator of interesting music than John Zobelli. That Agreed. is True. like the number That's one right. man of taste I would always trust. I, I totally agree. Yeah. In any direction. I know 100 uh, P gets a lot of praise, was, but Business most, Casual is yeah, a master a curator. Praise, John has to do this like every fucking week. You know That's I mean? my counterpoint. Like, he's, he's so good at and it. And also, Oh my God, and the sounds vary so much on that they, That's another great like, thing about it. They're all good. Like they're all not just yeah. good, but unique and not derivative. Totally like it's agree. very great be- best curator ever, John Zavelli. That's why I was I was pissing myself because you know I wanted to work up. You know I've been in vaporwave for a long time, like made like probably about 2015, and um, just never made it. Just been like a part of the scene, getting tapes and shit. Yeah. Uh, and over time, I feel like. I, I knew I knew the scene and I figured like we could work up labels you know like kind of like get like with each album and I didn't know what fucking label to put this sex line album on neither of us knew like we were considering we a, a tiger a, blood we wanted tiger yeah, blood we wanted tiger blood but like John literally DM'd me on <laughs> the iClick shit uh, on the iClick Twitter you want to release something with us and I was like holy Ooh, fucking yeah. shit like this I, is a I dream like this. I you got kind of head stuff, hunted like, that, was, that wasn't that wasn't even like in our like yeah, yeah we, we, I had wow. no I, I had no idea like that I, never I was kind of wanted to ask you that but you know I never cool. saw that shit coming and I was like yo like <laughs> fuck this is like one of the first vaporwave artists I was into was Christ and like huge influence for sure uh, back in the day and like you know i i had thought that um business casual was only did like didn't do sample based stuff anymore so i was like i don't know i i, I never i didn't think to submit it or to put it on a list of labels that we would submit to but yeah like that's I, super cool that's just so perfect and like i have no idea honestly where to go with, with this Why next album you idea? can go anywhere honestly like idea. here's the thing yeah the world is we have a few ideas like- you can go anywhere because people now know the music they know you guys you guys you know people like what you guys do you could put you go i mean when i think about it i mean just go anywhere you know what i mean it, that's like the fun of april wave it's like yeah just go anywhere it'll be fun to release yeah it, it depends like yeah it's it, it's not a matter of bigger or smaller it's a matter of um Oh, you know, I kind of like what this group is doing right here. I'd like to be a little bit associated with it. You know what I mean? That's honestly like the next thing, I think, or whatever. I don't know. You just know there is no right or wrong for where you go next. You know what I mean? Or Mm -hmm. what you want to do or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I I agree with that. And that's that's kind of my point is that like I didn't I didn't think that we we were at business casual level yet. 
you know yeah but of course you are hit us up and now now with business casual release i, I we can pretty much go everywhere and so now mm -hmm. i'm like fuck like, <laughs> hell yeah dude gallstones release real man. quick Real quick, wanted to mention something. Will was talking about how he got into the vapor early on in 2015. I had a little thought in my head. I was like, that's not early on. Dude. That's not early on. And then, I, and then I was thinking, like, you know what? Fuck gatekeepers in this fucking scene, bro. Who cares? Who gives yep. a shit? I mean, I was 15, so it was early on for me. Yeah, exactly. You were 15 in 2015? Mm -hmm. Oh, Same. I'm, I'm so I'm 21 in 2021. Oh my God! Same. Oh, you're. Oh and my God! You're so wise beyond your years. Knowledge. You're wise so beyond your music. years. You're 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 like five, yeah, man. You're like five. The kids right? are all you're right, aren't they, Chris? Years. They are all right. I'm I got fine. a I got a question for both of yeah, you. Guys. Wait, 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 Nathan. I'm Hold up, real quick, ah, Nathan. Right. The, the 15, that's the not 2015. True at all. That's, I that's so, Nathan, you have amazing taste, sir. It's not. Yeah, true both of you have amazing taste. Come on. I, I sent Nathan. Mario. I sent Nathan um, Macintosh Plus in like 2015 when I first listened to it, and like because I this was the first time I'd listened to it, and I sent it to Nathan. Nathan's the only person I knew at the time who made electronic music. Oh wow! And I was like, oh, "Yo, man. we need to make some vaporwave," and he replied, "Is this a meme?" Yeah, because like <laughs> because like he knew exactly what he was going to say. Like, and like 2013 or 2014, you know, I'd seen and heard, you know, floral shopping up. I was like, huh, that's funny. Like, like oh I'd seen God. people use it as like, you know, like I, I was like, yeah, it sounds like instead cool. of guts uh, theme, they have the Lisa it, Frank 420 little. Yeah, exactly. But I, I didn't, you know, there were no wubs or. Yeah, yeah there were no wubs. Yeah, so no was, uh, robot like, sex noises, as Chris calls it. Exactly. A robot yeah. screaming. That, something like that. That that was well, like... We robot sex. That's, that's fine. Or robot frogs, actually. Is what robot frogs, yeah. Robot frogs. Transformer sex. Hey, so what do you think about rhythm music, music, though? Do you fuck with rhythm? <laughs> rhythm is so funny. I, lo I, I, I love rhythm for the fact that the pop culture put it this way the other day. It is the most... It is very degenerative music in the <laughs> fact that it's like just wah, 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 it's wah, like dubstep wah, butt wah, rock. just over and over again but it like because it's so simple and like it it, it can appeal to everyone and like it's all about it's all about like this the sound design almost I feel like and it's about the rhythms and, basically and it's about the feel of it like when I go to a music festival and like okay so I don't listen to rhythm that much but but I definitely listen to it when I go to a music festival it's right. like nothing else like it really like feel it just feels different you know what I mean? Like nothing else feels Maybe like it. Maybe it just in, like, like slaps like, right in a live well, setting. No, I mean like you need to be there at like a festival with like a bunch of kids around you, a bunch of people around you when it plays. And it's like, it's a very different experience and there's not really yeah. anything quite like it. It's like the way it moves through the speakers and the way it moves in the ground, the bass moves through the ground into the people. It's a very interesting experience when it's played on giant speakers with a lot of people who are like right. ready for it and who are, who are primed for it. It's so different. So right. yeah, I mean it's interesting experience. And also, as for simple, you know, you know, like the people who call it simple, I don't think they know how to produce it. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't no, think they I, know right. how to make it. I challenge anybody who keeps calling it simple I, to even fucking I, make it. I've watched YouTube videos being like anyone can make it, and then they do right. this really shitty fucking barely adjust the LFO bullshit, I, and they're like, yeah, I just did it. Like, no, you fucking didn't. You didn't. I, you don't know. You don't know how to make it. <laughs> like, I dead ass make like just a rhythm loop just for fun. I just make them just for fun because it's fun. That's cool. And, like cool. It's fun. Like that's where I like came from. That's my roots. Kind of. I well, like that Nathan does that all the time. Anytime you go over to Nathan's house, you sit at the computer next to him and he's like, yo, check this out. And he's like, it's like rhythm song 115 or something. 115. And it's like, Wait, like, can you? I would whatever. love to hear some of these songs. That's yeah, like same. you release them in like a little Dropbox file. <laughs> like, wasn't somewhere. that sick? And I'm like, yeah, that was tight. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll send you like all of them. But the, the oh my part, God, I'd love to hear that. The thing, the, thing, the thing I'm trying to say is like, it, it is really fun to make and dubstep before it like dubstep from 2010 to 2012 and 13 is awesome and cool it's not but bad for sure it, it it was it was all like 
it's it's all the rhythm is kind of all over the place but when, yeah. when, when you get to a rhythm song it's just wah, 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 wah. and it's so funny like it just it's like the house music it is, of dubstep it, it's it kind of just smacks you in the fucking face it's like, it's, like i was saying before when you're when it's played live over the big speakers when there's somebody djing it live and it's the and it's like a festival circumstance it's like right. crowd control but it's crowd control you know what i mean it's putting the crowd into a the trance, into a rhythm, because the thing about it as well is the bass is so strong that it vibrates into the ground and then vibrates into the people. And then you, woo, 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 like you keep wow. it simple <laughs> to like move people and then you change it a little bit. And that's the way this music works when yeah. it's done live. It's like you, but, but, but you have that it's sort like of almost reggae wizardry. vibe to it. You have uh, that, uh, you have that reggae vibe happening to it where it's like, or the reggae like sort of beat to, do, like like syncopation that is to say and then you shake it a little bit and then you know and you shake it and then stop it and shake it a little bit more and I, then do I, a different type of shake and it shakes the people as well it's interesting when it's done in that circumstance go ahead you're saying i i love watching videos of people djing it because like there's because it's so simple they'll like go all out overboard and make an make an edit and of something just to like troll people to psych people out like they think it's going to be one song but then it goes into a different one and they go eh, 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 and chop it up. They, like, they do that a lot in dubstep and rhythm DJ. And it's just so funny. It's so funny. I have noticed it's that. Like, the, this brings me, this this conversation brings me to a hot take-ish that I have. Oh, sure. shit. Of like, like the, like electronic music, EDM subculture or like EDM subgenres, I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, like being dictated by beats per minute and shit. Like I feel like only the people who listen to that sh music can really tell the difference. And I feel like electronic music is the only like genre, EDM, I guess you'd say, I mean, is you the can... only genre that you can really like. You can say the like, same I... shit about like. What's the difference between signal wave and broken transmission? Like, yeah. not yeah, it, like, it's, like, it's like electronic music, you know? I, I, electronic music be like that. Like, there's all these subgenres are very hard to distinguish. Oh my god, wait, just like, just go into the world of techno and then look at all the oh, yeah. sub subgenres yeah, like, they call it. Yeah, like, for that. Like, I can't, they all sound the same I to think, me. <laughs> like, I think, like, older music is not like that like yeah and even like the only thing i could think of people saying is like maybe metal because a lot of metal subgenres a lot of metal does very... metal does oh, that they too got metal so also kind of very genres. metal but is like... the only other one i can think of that does it the same way that electronic music does it yeah you're right but i think that metal subgenres are only um are, are are way more distinguishable tbh than than um, electronic music, but I think I might only think that because I listen to a lot of metal and not a lot of. Yeah, yeah. well, I True. mean, but the, the thing is, is that like that there are certain, you know, like it's really easy to tell the difference between a deep house song and a bass house song. But is like, it? Is yes. it? <laughs> yeah, and I listen to just exclusively electronic no. music. Like, it's it, it's like literally What's like the difference? the difference is that a deep house song is like. Doop, 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 doop. And the bass house song is like, <laughs> like, it's like a pretty clear. Oh, like, I love that. It's crazy. But the, no, I want you to beatbox the entire album. House, if I was DJing, if I was DJing and I played a deep house song and then mixed in a fucking bass house song, yeah, people would tell the difference. You would tell the difference. People too. would. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, not me. Chris, uh, I, I Chris, feel like I need to be. I mean, listen, I, I, I agree with Nathan, but I know that I also listen to a lot of electronic music too, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know, am I biased? Am I the one? That's I don't know, thing. man. Here's the thing: as I'm a kind DJ, of scratching my chin I think too. that people will tell the difference because I think the energy will change. I think that the difference. I think that like, yeah, I think I think people, you know, I mean. Even if they're unaware of the difference in the in the music itself, I think they'll be aware of the energy being different. You know what I mean? And I think that they'll react differently. You well, know, I'm not sure. I don't. Will, I think so. Will is the, the right. Thing is though. Will is right though, because like there's like now there's like 
death step and tear out death and step. fucking like all, oh wow yeah this, i have no like, idea what any of that stupid, means all now this right. stupid shit that's just that but are those for aesthetic yeah you're right determined no, People, are they aesthetically determined or are they musically determined? It's tough to say. Like, um, I, I feel like people are obsessed with being the first. I feel like people are obsessed with being the first person in their subgenre. Like yeah, so, that's true. why you keep seeing so many. Oh, I'm the first tear out artist. Oh, this is tear out. This is, and it's like, like, is this really that different, or are we just trying to be the first of something? You know what I mean? Everyone's just desperate <laughs> to be the first of something. You know what I mean? It's is ridiculous. a lot of it tear out an actual genre. Yeah, it is. What is it? What's tear out? It's, it's, it's this guy named like Marada and this guy named, uh, or he used to go by Mastodon, but he had to change his name because the band. Mastodon. Yeah, the post metal band. Uh, this guy, okay. this guy, Trampa and shit. Like, it's just like really like loud and like aggressive. Like, <laughs> so like even more. <laughs> Imagine. Like loud sounding dubstep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It tear out rest. I imagine, need to hear some imagine out basing, right. dude. I don't know, man. But imagine basing your entire artistic career, uh, like on the fact that you are the pioneer of a subgenre of a subgenre of a subgenre, and imagine how much you've just boxed your fucking self you in. You painted yourself it's into a hell of a corner. That will always be expected of you because you use a specific snare drum and fucking sound frequency in a song because you're so desperate to pioneer a new genre, and now that's all you get to make because people will only expect that of you. And if you do something different, like I don't know, man, maybe it won't be. You won't be. You'll lose your following. Because you're stuck in some fucking subgenre. That's hot take. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. This concept of everybody needing to kind of classify everything into down to the minus, most minute detail. And I think they only do it because they're so fucking desperate to be like the pioneer of a subgenre or to be associated with. You know what I mean? Like it's so silly. And it's so silly to box yourself in. Like I could, man. If you listen to skeleton lipstick music. Like, I would never, like, call me Vaporwave because I don't have a subgenre. Like, that music, I'll, it still sounds like it's made by me, but the stuff is, there's all kinds of different sounding songs that I make. Like, it just always like, sounds like me. I would never, ever want to be like, you've definitely this pioneered make, a distinctive sound. It, like, it's me? got that pop. Yeah, you've what? got a pop. Listen, okay, you don't paint yourself I into did? a corner, but you've got, like, a pop EDM sensibility with, like, a, like a Vaporwave background. Okay, and your synth palette's that, constantly though. evolving, yeah. but like, no, you're not doing Thank it you. to do it. Just, you know, yeah. I, I mean, you I grow and you change and you evolve. The EDM thing. I, I've I've never heard of like a metal band doing like creating a genre or whatever, like just to do that. And there's it's usually a collective like, group of from says, an area. Who yeah. says that um, metal subgenres are mostly musical? than aesthetic uh, troll metal and I'd say that might mm, be untrue Viking because metal. like the only thing that is different between gore grind and porno grind is the lyrical content like you know the, it's the same music pirate like, metal pretty much to the T like all these different grindcore subgenres it's all like the aesthetic you're already locked into the aesthetic of the sound, and now like people, are, your lyrics and imagery always has to be this, or else like yeah, yeah. You that's know, why you gotta have like, multiple you lose different aliases, bro. Oh my god, different aliases! I don't yeah, want to do. I don't. I don't know, but that's so much work to manage them all. And you're then that's, literally like, now you're, doing now you're it. Uh, me? Yeah. Well, oh, it's yeah, not out yet, that. but you know. Oh well, yeah, but that's one. Yeah, like, There's only okay, one. Okay, one. Metal. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But it's like war it's metal like, and pirate metal and Viking metal, like that's all just cringe. I, I, it, imagine having imagine so all cringe. your albums have to be about pirates forever. <laughs> and imagine you have to play pirate music <laughs> but for, until the age of like sixty-five. Uh, y'all remember when like, like those two Irish punk rock, rock bands were like super popular? Like it's like that. You got to be like the the Irish punk rock band phase of the mid two thousands. Yeah, the where it's like fucking or like or like. Uh, like Roma people rock folk music, like, and, and that just some, came and um, went. I saw some article on Hard Times that's like Dropkick Murphys put back into storage until next St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> no shit, right? <laughs> Shout out my girl. Can, can I can I bring up a hot take? Yes, let's hear let's hear your hot takes. You made a whole list of them. I have a, I they have, have to be. List, right? We have to hear some. There's of them. a list. There's a yeah, list, dude. Wait. We have to go I through the hot takes. I can't wait to destroy your opinion with facts and logic. Blank. Oh no! Oh, so you watch Rick and Morty <laughs> as well? 
No, Will Will has to agree with this one, or else you're stupid. Blank. <laughs> Blank Banshee one better than Blank Banshee zero. Absolutely. Yes. Well, says oh, the man no. that plays teen pregnancy. I don't know. I know. Blank I mean, Banshee I, one I, better. Someone, someone, some vaporwave person that always messages me on Facebook messaged me the other day that was like, "Oh, like, am, God, my cat is knocking shit over." No. <laughs> oh, like Blank Banshee, like. Am I the only one that forgot about Blank Banshee or whatever? And I was like, yeah, true. No, I know I some people that don't fuck with Blank Banshee. Uh, but I listened really? to the album literally last night. I listened to Blank Banshee Zero, and I was like, yeah, this shit is fucking gas. Like, it's amazing. I can't believe that album. God damn. It's, it's really, it, oh, I don't know how that shit is like holds up and it's still its own thing. Like often, I remember like, songs, often imitated not, by I others, but never songs. fully repeated. You if know, you have to make a list of vapor right. trap artists, Blank Banshee's like at the top. Well, no, because like, they're just so the good. Top. They're just like, the, it's, it can be like this. The sounds are like, so like they feel like i feel like i'm like stuck in like a computer that has like a blank screen on it and like the snares and the symbols cut perfectly like it's crazy they like i don't and right. no one and no one gets it that i see so many i need so many artists try and like do that and just man they don't get the frequencies right they don't get the sound textures right i don't know what's wrong but they're not getting the space correct in the same way that that he did and still holds up today um it's fascinating like how well it's produced when did that album come out Oh my god, it would, Zero was a 2011? Early. It's 2012, September 1st, 2012. Oh, yeah, yeah, amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. one of the first Monica like, says, people still can't things. imitate it. I don't understand. Monica says we're still trying to figure out how to imitate it properly. Like your Blank Banshee, Blank Banshee 1. Like, oh, you can I, say Blank Banshee 1's better, but like, Blank Banshee 0, the blueprint. Yes, but, for uh, sure. And the blueprint that is it wasn't still focused still sounding copies enough. properly. Yeah. Uh, not that's even Blank good. Banshee himself. Yeah, that's true. The, 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 they don't, it's amazing that people can't get that. Like, they try and do it all the time, and they never get it right. No one's ever gotten it right aside from him. The, so the, I think that the take Monica wants me to bring up is that I think that Mana Pool by the Vaporer, even though it's not as, uh, let me say, like, stylistically like fleshed out and full and like well produced and crazy as blank banshee is i still prefer mana pool by vapor even it's though solid. Even, well, like, just because of the simplicity and like i i i it's weird i because i feel like blank banshee is like objectively more detailed and cooler but I really fucking like Mana Pool by Vapor, even though Jeff's it's like synth palette is simple. amazing. Well, yeah. Jeff's like got got this phenomenal like jazzy like vibe inside him, and in, in, in the way he makes music, yeah. and then and in his background in general, and like it's just it's like even when he's trying to control it and do something simple, like you can feel that like that that jazz sensibility right. like poking through no matter what he does, and I just. I know, like the the the, the, the mana pool. Oh, the, the love and and also just love love Jeff in general. I love Same. that man. First, a lot. One of the best Very DJs I've ever hey, seen. Love him. We gotta get him on it. I gotta ask him on sometime soon. Please do. When eventually, we get to everybody tape, eventually. I threw that shit on my fucking tape deck, and like, I was just like, because I I feel like at the time, I was just getting into rap music, and then that album came out. Yeah. And like, I got it on tape, and I. Like what I liked about rap music was the 808s. Yes. Yes. Like that's that's what first made me like it, and then putting that Especially album. Especially like on, the Memphis stuff. It's like nonstop, fucking 808s, and I was like, yo, this yeah, is the shit. Bro. Like, here's a here's a hot. Yeah, let's hear another one. Rap music. Okay. Involving rap music, fucking shit that like is just like like playboy cardi or something like it was just the same phrase over and over and over and over again i would much rather listen to that than some guy going to, to i'd much rather listen to that than eminem going like my my mom's my mom sucks and i i, I i'm lyrical and i'm spiritual like i i just like it just Damn, pains son. me to listen to that stuff. Like it pains just, you to listen to it. it? It's well, it's, it's, Eminem's voice, voice is extremely irritating. Would you be able to listen to like sounding. something like Tribe Called Quest though? Maybe something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Or, or or MF Doom? 
Yeah, like something yeah, like that. No, I, I love that that shit. Oh, okay. Well, that's the fine. Shit, the then it's just that, like the shit that falls into I under see. the category of like just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Like, you I know. understand that. Like, I understand same with, that. It's same yeah. with anything, People, right? Like, like that's why I understand. I that. hate yeah. animals as leaders, or like some like Chon or something like that. Like or Jacob Collier. Yeah. Like, oh God! <laughs> oh my like, God. kill me! Like that shit is like, like. Uh, yeah, I agree with all with everyone. That you guys shit's are saying. like ridiculous. Like Gentle Giant, my favorite band, is proggy as hell and does all this crazy musical shit that like is hard to wrap your head around theory wise, but they do it in a way that is like still groovy and musical. Yeah, you know. So they, that there is like you know that becomes masturbatory when you start sort of doing these things that are just like because you can and you have to subject all of us to it like. Like it's like in essence they're do they're just giving you a warm up like their warm up like a vocal warm up or like an instrumental warm up that they do to test their skills before they actually make the fucking music and now they've actually just calling that music they're and giving flap it to track. you and like motherfucker like that's for you that's for you oh that's funny so it's like that like, like I that. pissed off Lux and and Jez in the chat because Why? the animals is latest but like yeah no like the like fucking too many notes shit is annoying like give me some like gore guts shit where it's like a couple notes but it's really weird like the, the, you know jacob collier is is the biggest thing this is the biggest thing in this category for me because he's just like Boop, bop, do this. here's a bm plus 17 over six to like in second inversion chord like just because you can do that doesn't mean it sounds good and I would want to listen to it again. Like, it's it's just not... It, it, Man, all that music theory class really did pay off. Yeah, like, it, it made wow. me hate that shit. <laughs> well, so I was in music theory class for two years and I got to that point of, like, here's why Mozart is, like, blah, 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 blah. And, it, and like, I was just like, I don't care, like... The, Mozart's flaps, you're dumb. No, I, I didn't <laughs> say Mozart's bad diff shit. Why did I say that? What I was saying was... <laughs> Mozart kind of made was... Classical music is different. Classical music oh. is like a scientific study in shit like that. Like, yeah, and that's like, what I mean. Like, uh, Beethoven's like, always a big feel for me. That. Cash has a really good question. What is everybody's thought on math rock? Love it. I love math rock so much. Like, I, I mean, really yeah. love math I don't listen to that kind of shit. Tricot? Have oh, Tricot's great. Tricot Love Tricot, the Japanese band Tricot. Outstanding. Female, not Japanese not Tricot. female band. All female, right? Damn. Band yeah, all female. Very um, cool. I listened to a lot of, like, mathy, or back in the day, I guess, and, like, I used to listen to like, a lot of mathy metal, like something like Botch, Math Core, I guess. So I was, like, interested in that. I didn't listen to but, a lot like, of math rock. But, like, what about, like, Converge? Like, oh, Converge? Yeah, okay. Are we considering that math rock as well? Sure. Okay, I mean, love right? Like, or like technical metal. Like the thing is with math rock. Well, it it's converges like, its own fucking thing. That's like a that's like a, a whole spirit energy. Right, but like yeah, like a math like metal core type vibe. is math rock. Yes, yeah, like, yeah, that's what I said about like Bosch. I think Bosch is a good example of that. Go ahead, battles. Sorry, what you're battles. I I don't like battles. Hot you, take. That is a hot battles take. is different. Because battles, I mean, it's is not for algebra listen. Rock. Battles has yeah, like some decent like tracks, the same but, like, song over and over again. That's okay. I agree, like. and the vocals are always really annoying. Except when Gary Newman is on the vocals, that's when it's fire. Gary Newman battles has good battles? songs, but like, I won't consider you a good artist if you don't have a good album all the way through. Wow, interesting. Damn, yeah, bro. absolutely, like, it's fair. What I'm, what I was saying about math rock is like, there's so many different layers to math rock. There's like. The fucking like Chon Tappy bullshit, which I don't like, except for some artists do it like really well. And then there's like fucking like Captain Jazz, or like Captain Jazz other, is like yeah, is uh, interesting. They, like, they're like, or, like the converge, or like the people say like people say Slint is math rock, and like. They this have, is like a very I wide know. umbrella for math rock that I didn't but really like, think about. Yeah, but yeah I guess I do listen to a lot of math rock. Maybe they have hella subgenres like, too. It's... Algebra rock. But, but Trigonometry rock. The, the thing rock. is, it doesn't have subgenres. It's just math rock, but right. they, it all sounds like wildly different. A lot of apergiatic sort of work. I see True. what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, we're running like out of time. We are. <laughs> well, let's get some I more hot. Let's get some more hot takes in real fast before we have to start doing our okay. shout outs. 
I can't believe we, that's already been two hours. Same. Yeah. We yeah. Holy four shit, people. Seriously? Now, here's the thing is we do have four people this time, so like I can see yeah, how like, I could, went I could go time. for another. I could go for another five hours. And yeah, I'm having let a good me, time. Me, I would keep going if I didn't have to go to bed. Just read them all super fast. All right, Waterfront Dining, really good, but his album art is terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wow, good, yeah, fair Art's enough. True. My Art's first true. viral tweet was of the Waterfront Dining album cover that, like, looks like it's a dick, and so I posted it, <laughs> and then, like... <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that's a choice. That must be a choice, I think, on their yeah, part. Yeah, he blocked Didn't he get yeah, blocked? He oh, my God. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, my goodness. All right. Love Dream Waterfront Dining. Dream Dream Punk What's the next is, one? Dream Punk is stupid boring. Oh, um, true. The Caretaker is a really cool concept, but I don't need to listen to the whole thing, and I don't want to. <laughs> um, that <laughs> six-hour album? Wrong. Yeah, I don't want to. These are great. Oh, yeah. that, that, is, that is an honestly hot take. I'd say um, fucking Derelict Mega Tower, same thing. God oh, damn! Wow. Like Mega Towers, no. Takes. They're like Mega Towers, way more interesting though. The fucking caretaker. Yeah, kind is of, just, it's wow. long like as a bitch. James though. DDS. It just sounds like James DDS. It's like, like I, I like it all. I, I like the whole thing. But the thing but is, like, like they're like Mega Towers. You can pick a track from midway through the album and be like, oh yeah, this goes with the caretaker. Yeah. It's like it's like really one long track. No, that is true. That is true. That is true. It does sound uh, different. But but the but the like, I'm talking about that one caretaker album, and then they're like Mega Tower, like the one caretaker album being a million years long, and same with the DDS album. Like the DDS album is objectively way better, but like cooler in concept than like I'm not gonna like really listen to the whole thing or like get the chance to listen to the whole thing a lot yeah. unless I'm on like a road trip when I want to. You know, well, yeah. you'll be on one right, of those. Hot takes. Otherwise, this, 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 yeah, let's through. keep them rolling. Keep them no. rolling. This is really good. You guys are doing excellent hot takes, by the way. This is yeah, great. Musicals, keep, keep all musicals and show tunes are are gross and corny. They're usually and, they're they're not, very boring. This strong Jesus Christ, disagree. Strong agree. Strong, Lady Jesus Christ, Superstar is some incredible. of my favorite music I've ever heard in my life. Uh, I like Lady Jesus Christ Superstar. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that's Fiddler on the Roof is good. <laughs> anything pre, anything pre like nineteen like fifty is just like awesome. Awesome. okay, that's fine. Awesome. All right. oh, more hot takes, more hot yeah, takes. Yeah, let's hear some more. This is great. Um, this is real fun. You are a baby if you don't like mint chocolate chip. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Ognos is so a baby. True. Agree, agree, agree. Oh wait, it's uh, not Ognos. It's somebody else. One more time is the worst track on Discovery. Hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, you know, I think I. Uh, that, might I may not, have, that might be true. That might not. I think be I, I agree with you. Actually, I, like I that do. Song. I like no, that song. It, it's it's jazz that doesn't like mint what? chocolate chip. Yeah. Man, you're right. That's my least like song on that album. Actually, now that I think about it, I really love that album. And I, it's not that I don't love that song, but yeah, I think I like every other song better than it on that album. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Oh, let's see here. Luther Vandross, best vocalist of all time. That's not even, Very good. That's not even a hot take. Alexander um, O'Neill, second best. There's probably 13 really good future funk artists, and the rest of it, I uh, don't Total care agree. About. I'd say that number is too high. Oh, yeah, you guys are I, so I, mean I, on this I, show to I, feature. No, I thought, that's I, savage, but I, I totally I, agree. I, thought, I don't agree. At I think there I are many, was, many great future funk uh, producers. At first, I thought it was too high speak. too, but then I, I started thinking like Groovy Kaiju, Barb Walters, Strawberry Station, Barb Walters is a one. Like I, I, lo I yeah. love, I love all that. Uni shit. Wise, does he even count because he does so many other types of music? Right. So does I, so does Groovy. Future funk. I run in he does do future funk. I run into this with Vaporwave a lot. Is where I love the person, but you know. Me I too, think but... that this is an interesting thing. I think that this is just a signal to the future funk artists out there to like, you know, if it were me and I made future funk all the time, like I'd be like, I see that as a challenge. I'll show right. you, and I would make some really yeah. great stuff. Also, also, sure. let me just all go out and say it right now is that like two of the greatest producers in this scene, which would be Super Flat mm. and um, Moy Shop, are future funk producers, and they are a thousand times better than most vaporwave dream punk 
or whatever fucking other sub genre producers out there, like a thousand times better than Damn. That. Super Flat and uh, More Shop are like I the greatest love... producers in the scene and they're future funk artists. So I will say I love... that there you go. I love With Fresh that. House and uh, and New Disco. I love that shit. Like but I'm wearing like... a, I'm wearing a Super <laughs> Flat shirt right now. I don't even make that. I man was is, gonna is, ask you is what a, that was. He's a fucking genius, and all this music is amazing and uh, better than most other music, just out there in general. No matter what the genre is. Anyway, all right, let's more, go with more the hot, hot takes. takes. Frank Ocean, good, but not that good. False. Agree. False. 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 He, he's, False. He's not as he's not as good as, as everyone False. makes him out to be. False. Agree. False. Not true. He's way better than anyone makes him out to be. Like the he didn't even get a McDonald's no, meal. The fact that an artist, the fact that an artist, has reached his level of attention. For how experimental their music is, is unreal. Like that yeah, is I'm fucking just, so cool. I'm just, and the music is unreal good. And you're dumb and soulless for not liking it. Soulless. Nah, you're, Frank. Okay, so like Frank Ocean, like yeah, he makes really good music. I'm not saying he don't. But people are like he's the best artist of all time. I listen to. Blonde you know why they say that? You know why they say that? Because he makes a song pyramids 11 minutes mm. long and you spin that shit and everyone up in the fucking club is dancing their ass off 11 minute long song and so they're like oh wow whoa like this is some shit that i can't even understand like usually i would never listen to a fucking frank ocean is the pink floyd of now like wow. doing wow. weird shit that is a hot and wow. getting it to a crazy level i would wow. not say that Frank Ocean's the Pink Floyd of now. Oh yeah, that's oh that's yeah. cap. That's, no, that's I I would watch a uh, podcast with uh, damn even with pop Will culture and disagrees. Doing too. uh doing arguing arguing well, back and forth with each other stupid, so. like uh, but, uh yeah what I would say uh. <laughs> like like a like a e like a Damn, Siskel and Ebert son. sort of thing with music with uh, Nathan and Will. Yeah, that would same. be a fun show. To watch. Show they, they get does. into it. They get into it with each other. I would love it. Uh, what are some other hot takes? Home Alone Three is the best Home Alone. Nope. Movie. That's yeah. wow. That's uh -uh. <laughs> wow. It's true. It's just true. Uh, what, that's what, like what? me. That's like when I bought. It doesn't Never even have Macaulay Die Culkin Black in Sabbath it. On vinyl, and then said that that was the best Black Sabbath album just because I owned it on vinyl. Uh, no, no, that's Quiz just agrees untrue. with you. That's exactly. Like <laughs> the well, other Home back. Alone, the other Home Alone movies don't have a terrorist missile chip from North Korea getting intercepted by a little fucking kid and the Jamie Foxx song in it. Like, that's true. That does true. have a Jamie Foxx song. Statistic, like. And you know how I am about movies too, and like that shit, Home Alone three is incredible for that, and I love that. But like, the first Home Alone, honestly, like we watch it every fucking Christmas, and yeah. I still die laughing. The well, second, the like, second Home Alone is better than the first. The second Home Alone is also really good. I don't know. It about is. It. It's it, there's a bit of magic in this. Okay, what other hot takes do we have? Um, let's see here. Vanilla ice cream is better than chocolate ice cream. What? True. Yeah, I, that's some odd true. no shit right I agree. There. I, I, I agree with that too, actually. I'm a, more, right, I'm babe, a vanilla person too. True. Okay, mm -hmm. what else? Uh, okay, mm. let's say this. Viper is unironically really good in music. So <laughs> true. That is the church. Like, really Viper good. is, <clears throat> like... Yeah. As much as he's memed, he should be recognized for like the amount of good shit he has. Like, and and if you can go and randomly scroll through all the million albums and choose a random one, and play a random song, and like if it's not a copy of another song, it's really good. Not defending anything that he's done. He's a fucking asshole, yeah, dick, not. penis, yeah, man. But like that music is really good. Um. That's about it for the hot uh -huh. takes. HKE has three good songs at most. Um, <laughs> Cold take. Agreed. I don't know. I, I, it's, I, I like. I <laughs> Someone said earlier, says first time chat viewer. The vanilla thing was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Hard agree. <laughs> Welcome to hot takes. <laughs> Yeah, Guys, we gotta wrap it up. Good. Unfortunately, we like to do a spot at the yeah, end of the night where we let time, everybody. Though. Me too. Everybody gets to kind of have the floor for a few minutes and promote anything they want to promote. So, um, 
Which one of you guys is younger? I am Nathan. All right, Nathan goes first. Listen to uh, I click one nine 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 one nine 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 sex line on business cash oh, we'll buy a cassette. There's several left. Purchase it. Listen to it. I promise you, it is objectively better. Oh, than thank you so much for hitting us with that link, Lux. Lux is spamming thank the you, link. Lux. What a home. Shout out Luxury Lead. <clears throat> um, please listen to that and our other music. Um, listen to my single refresh that I just dropped um, on Friday. It's pretty cool. Uh, if you're a fan of NRAIL, please be patient. I have uh, a new album coming out sometime next year. But um, Adele fucked something up, so it's <laughs> probably going to take a while, even though it's been ready since May. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've never seen The Godfather, Breaking Bad, Twin Peaks, Shawshank Redemption, Inception, Schindler's List, Fight Club, The Matrix, Interstellar, Terminator, The Shining, Earth, <laughs> Sass, One, Space, Odyssey. Oh, no. uh, now it's Now it's Will's <laughs> turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Will hates I the mean, Revenant. Fuck. Yeah, I hate the Revenant. Um, first, shout out to everyone who hates the Revenant. Shout out to my cat Hand Banana. Oh, oh my uh, God! After the, I love the love the Aqua Teen reference with Hand Banana. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, sh <laughs> shout out to my band, the Gallstones. Uh, we're a grindcore band. You want to drop a link in the uh, in the chat, yeah. maybe for the Bandcamp? I can drop a Bandcamp link to our like first EP album nice. thing, which is like six minutes long and it's like six songs. But um, we're recording like professionally a new album. Amazing. Uh, it should be out soon. I think it's pretty good. Um, Ah, what a, I, hit me up if you need visuals. I'd be doing visuals on commission. Solid uh, work. You like the I click it, then like, you know, I can do your music video or your fucking visual album if you want me to, or your whatever, or do like a picture or something, a poster, whatever. I I do that shit like in class, so it's like. It just passes the time for me, and I love doing it. Um, shout out to y'all for having us on. Thank especially you. Thank you, Hell guys. Yeah. Yeah. Fat homie. Shout out to everyone in Rosewood. <clears throat> Rosewood represent. My girlfriend, Faith. Shout out everyone that has kept iClick going till this point. And uh, yeah, I think, especially Carter. Shout out Reverse Reference. If you need like, something you mastered, out. if you need something yeah. mastered really good, hit up Reverse Reference. Okay. Yeah, and Retrack has our Ecstasy Market vinyl. Yep. Which, I mean, I think there's more left, but I don't really know. There it is. I should know because I have all the records in my house. <laughs> but, like, you know. And then shout out Be Careful and shit. And, yes. like, Be Careful is the shit. It's anonymous. Just met People. him recently in person. Jealous. Yeah, like this show. We're playing a show in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, oh, December tenth. Hell so yeah! Like, Hell of a lineup too. To that. Yeah, and I throw shows down here. So if you're not <clears throat> far from Nashville, hit me up. I'm trying to get the vaporwave scene in the South going for real. Oh yeah. And I got I got a pretty big show coming up. I won't spoil it, but it's gonna be really fucking dope so if you're anywhere near nashville you're definitely gonna want to come out to it very cool and yeah that's all i have all right i'll make mine real quick because um i'm younger than chris so just finished up heat wave in mesa it's a smashing success shout out chief leaf va10 association ds dude feeds the wombat sky yamaha and and uh groovy kaiju tore it down at Cheat Code Lounge last Saturday night. Um, shout out! I didn't. I didn't tell you uh, this yet, Chris. My sister flew into town, didn't tell me shit. Showed up at my show. Wow! It was amazing. Oh, that's so adorable. It was so Love cool. That. She got to see me throw down some uh, some vapor funk. 
Got my setup on SoundCloud along with the Virtual Memory 27 set. We haven't had an episode yes. since Virtual Memory 27. Tore it down there too, two weeks ago. Nice. Shout out Alex. Uh, shout out uh, Earth Boy Advance, Groovy Kaiju. Um, um, spacing on who else played with me besides oh mittens oh mittens is an extremely extremely skilled dj by the way um so i've got both sets up on soundcloud great working with pacific plaza and the va10 association um this weekend we have helios online it's ming curry's birthday happy birthday ming curry so ming happy curry birthday. love happy ming curry birthday. Happy birthday, yeah ming shout curry. out ming we curry so me lux and a handful of other big names i think windows 96 rashida prime nathan are all going to be on the lineup Saturday. They're going from like early in the morning all night long. So it's a long one. Um, my set's actually at 4:20 <laughs> Central Time. It's How a 20-minute wave music set. I already mentioned you and uh, oh, I love your it. partner will probably love it. I pulled out all the stops. Absolutely. Uh, visuals Can't by wait. Sleep Pattern. After that, I'm taking a fucking break because I've been your boy's been busy. I got this shirt from a uh, synthwave collective man. in Mesa, Desert Runners. Busy. I'm in talks with a really cool guy named Heretic about doing some synthwave DJ sets down Ooh. in Mesa coming up here pretty soon, probably 2022. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, um, fuck coronavirus. Uh, hopefully everybody that has gotten the coronavirus is uh, feeling okay. Um, one of our own unfortunately caught it over the weekend, so um, she's on the mend, thank God. But that's it for me, man. I think I covered everything. On to you. Not too much for me this week, honestly. Uh, just go listen to the new Skeleton Lipstick song, Life You Wanted, on Spotify or Bandcamp or whatever. Uh, there's a link. True. Spotify. Oh, that artwork and is then, sick, um, too. Oh, that's by Eric Weidner. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you do a great job. And then um, if you want, go buy Glows and the Melts on vinyl. And that's it for now. I'm taking a break myself, sir. Right. All right, I'm going to drop a link to the official Spotify playlist because I did update our playlist. You updated your Skellies, what Skelly listening oh, to. Oh, yes. And uh, so I went ahead and updated our official Spotify playlist. Thank you so much for tuning in, everybody in chat, for bringing the hot takes and the opinions and the, uh, the, the geeking out that we got to do tonight. Thank you, Nathan and Will, for joining us tonight. Really Thank enjoyed. you guys for having us. Thank you guys. Thank really you enjoyed guys. having you on. Uh, yes. I think it's Excuse safe to going. announce that in two weeks we're going to be bringing on who are we bring on, Chris. Uh, giant uh, Keith Rankin himself, Giant Claw. Giant Claw Fuck will be yeah. joining us in two Yo, weeks. Yo, holy shit! Giant Claw was on the Model 360 podcast, and I loved his episode, so we're excited. Um, thanks again for tuning in, guys. Join us in two weeks, uh, and uh, we're going to roll the ad and good night. Night. That's a hot take. <laughs> Around American flag, yeah. That's what America's supposed to be. It's supposed to look like terminally chill. Look, the yeah. insurance commercial has a fat ass, but like no personality. Yeah, I feel like sitting here and listening to this. <laughs> no, god damn it. Isaac, New Noise is not the first fucking refused album. Rip Isaac a new one today. Do you know what I mean? Like.